We're back on the record. The parties are present along with plaintiff's counsel. Your next witness. Uh, John Urich, Your Honor. I do. State your full name for the record and spell your last name. John Leonard Urich, Y-U-R-I-K. Thank you. All right, uh, may I proceed, Your Honor? Yes. Mr. Urich, uh, can you tell us where you reside at the present time? 8870 West Katy Avenue, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89147. How long have you resided there? Two years. And is that a property that uh, you own or rent? Rent. If we look at Exhibit 18, can you review that and tell us if you can identify that for the court? Uh, it's a 45-day rent increase for my landlord. And does that um, reflect the Katy Avenue property? Yes. What are you paying rent there at the present time? 1600 a month plus trash of 35 so 1635 a month. So presently, are you in a month-to-month? -month yes, fixed presently there? I'm on a month-to-month. Move for admission of Exhibit 18 here. Admitted. Who resides there with you? Um, my four kids. And you have um, how many bedrooms there? There's four bedrooms and a a loft that's kind of a bedroom, just an open doorway. What's your date of birth? 4 27 58. And so right now you're 59 years old, my math's correct? Yes. Presently married to uh, the defendant seated to my left, correct? Correct. You and she had three children together? Yes. Did you also adopt her son, Mikey? Yes. And does Mikey live with you at the present time? Yes. What is the extent of your education? Um, bachelor's degree in accounting in Northern did Colorado. When did you get that degree? 1981. What is your occupation? I am a general manager of a sign company owned by my mother. What has been your work history as an adult? Since moving to Las Vegas in 1988, I've been in the sign industry prior to that. I held a couple different accounting positions with uh, real estate developers. Do you work from an office or your home? My home. Do you recall the date you and uh, the defendant were married? Yes. What's the date of marriage? August 30th, 2003. Where were you married? St. Joseph's Church in Las Vegas. How was your relationship at the beginning of the marriage? Um, great. We got along fine. We were friends for a while before we got married. Uh, I had a lot of interest in common. I was told by her she wanted a family and children like I did. Did there come a point in time in the marriage where the relationship began to change? Yes. When was that? Approximately 2009, when 
the business and most businesses were struggling due to the uh, recession, the Great Recession, if you will. Uh, money was tight. She wanted to go out and party. Uh, Objection. Grounds. She wanted to go out and party. Um, how does it, that, that's how does he know what I wanted to do? She started going out with her a couple girlfriends. Um, actually, going to my ex-wife's house and parties they were having. I didn't want to socialize with my ex-girlfriend. Was confused that she even wanted to. Not ex-girlfriend, ex-wife, and was confused she even wanted to. Um, well, you, you, t you told us about. Uh, the business uh, being affected by the recession. What business was that? Signs West Incorporated. Okay. Is that a different business from the business that you presently work for? Yes. Signs West Incorporated was owned by who? It was owned by Uric Industries, a limited partnership that was in turn owned by the Uric Family Trust, which for my parents. What happened to Science West Inc.? As we were struggling, we took on an investor from Phoenix to come up. He put 300000 into the business. He turned out to be a crook and was getting money from Russia. Um, one thing led to another. We survived for about six to eight months. They weren't paying the IRS taxes, 941 taxes, and the IRS eventually closed, our, closed us down and forced us into bank. Well, we were in bankruptcy 11, and they forced us to 7. At its uh, most productive point during the marriage, uh, how many people did Sings West Inc. employ? During the marriage? Right. Uh, approximately 70, maybe, give or take. And what type of gross sales would the business generate? 10 to 12 million a year. When the business ended, uh, how many people were was it employing? 15-ish, 20 maybe. Your mother testified to some repossession of trucks. Uh, do you recall that occurring? Yes. Was that from Signs West Inc.? Yes. What type of vehicles were repossessed? Uh, two 85-foot uh, boom trucks that they had guaranteed the loans on. When were they repossessed? 2009. When the business ended, what type of sales was it generating then? When it ended, not much. Maybe a hundred thousand a month. About a million a year, maybe a little less. Was that enough to pay the expenses of the business? Not the way they were running it. They being the investors from Phoenix, and in the investment agreement, my brother and I were to remain out of the day-to-day -day operations. And in hindsight, it appears their main agenda was to deal, if you will, our assets and our website. They didn't really want the business to succeed, and our employees. Did drug use uh, become an issue in the course of your marriage to the defendant? Yes. When did that become an issue? As far as first-hand knowledge and seeing her use meth, um, Maybe 2008 to 2010-ish. That concern you? Yes. She said she needed it to lose weight, and she doesn't do it that often. Was there any other concerns regarding drug use during the course of the marriage? And, and I suspected she was doing meth for the entire year of 2014 and 2015 prior to her abandoning the family. What led you to that suspicion? I've seen her do it. Grounds. I've already taken a drug test and proven that these allegations are false. 
You took one in 2015? I took one with this court and took a hair and urine um, sample at when he was alleging that I was doing drugs that entire time. He said in 2014 and 2015, he suspected you were using meth. I did not drug test you during those years. I've already shown that he's falsely accused me of this. Overruled. Yeah. What led to your suspicions in 2014, 2015? Uh, she, I saw it. She bought it. I saw it. It came in little baggies. Um, she had a, like, metal cigar box about yay dig that had a pipe in it and all kinds of um, paraphernalia for smoking meth. Did her demeanor change after you married? Um, after we were married? Yes. Well, it changed over time, but the first six, seven years, I mean, she had issues, but for the most part, we got along great. What happened after the first six or seven years? She started getting a lot more angry, wanting to go out more, um, seemed to have a hair trigger temper. Browns? I don't know, but it, it doesn't seem like he should be able to comment on, like, a, my, like, what he thinks I was doing when I wasn't, what, I, what he thinks I was or wasn't doing. He's testifying from his own personal knowledge. Okay. He's not guessing. Okay. Overruled. Did that change in demeanor have any effect on the children from what you could observe? Yeah, I mean, at that time, the kids from our blood were very young. Mikey, the older one now who's 20, at that time was yelled at a lot, belittled a lot, um, and I kept telling her she can't, she has to stop doing that. You can't keep calling him an idiot and belittling him and yelling at him. And she would raise her voice almost every day, and the F word was used almost every other sentence out of her mouth. Um, how, how would you describe, from your observations, uh, Mikey's relationship with his mother at the present time? Hardly any relationship. He was going to have, he was invited to have, his birthday was just the 27th of July, and I offered to take him to dinner and he goes well I already got plans with mom and Gilby they're taking me to dinner and I go okay we'll just come over the next day and then later he said they had canceled on him and when, when I ask my questions it's not my intent to have you tell what other people said okay um, what is your belief as far as the, the court has to make a decision on custody of the children the three youngest children what do you believe is in their best interest uh, for the court to do? For me to have full physical and legal custody of the children. And so are you requesting sole legal custody of the children? Yes. And by that, do you have any objection to the defendant having access to the children's school, medical records, things like that? No. But um, do you have an objection to her making decisions about the children. Yes. And why do you object to that? Because most decisions about the children are, are what, in, what is in her best interest, not the children's best interest. Historically, can you think of any decisions that Elena has made concerning the children that uh, you believe were not good decisions for the children? Yes, quite a few. Um, I'm going to be all over the map, just as I recall. Um, in homeschooling Jordan, I office at home, so I would be in my office, and almost every day when she was homeschooling, they would yell at each other, scream at each other, Jordan would cry, I would have to go down there and break it up, and talk to Elena and explain to her that that's not very conducive to a child learning by yelling at her and scaring her. Um, I've seen her slap her a couple times. And I would separate them and tell Jordan to go to her room and cool off for 10 minutes, and then they went about their homeschooling. But it was almost every day yelling. 
And it's, I, I tell them, this should be fun. You're teaching your daughter. You should enjoy this. But it never seemed to be that way. Um, she does favor Jordan over the two boys. Um, prior to me filing for divorce in August, she had Jordan in her possession from January through August, approximately seven months, while they she couch topped at different men's places or strippers' homes Objection. in LA. He doesn't know what, what I was doing or where I was living or anything like that. Yeah, I actually Objection. do. Objection. He has no proof of that. And it, he does not know anything. He, the court will. January to August of 2016? Yes. Okay. What was your personal knowledge about her living situation? Well, initially, when she left the family on Christmas, December 15. Objection. It was not proven that I left then, nor did I did not leave then. Overruled. Well, whenever she left the family, late 2015, early 2016, she was living with a David Cooper. Whom Objection. Grounds? It's not true, but what, why, uh, how, why does he think that? He has no evidence, or that never happened. You'll be able to cross-examine him. Okay. You live with David Cooper. Go ahead. And his two girlfriends, if you will. He is a known swinger, sex club operator, um, big in the sex industry. And she took my daughter there often. Uh, she then, my point being, she exposed my daughter to, for seven months to different men and left my daughter with different families to stay at while she did who knows what. I'm assuming dancing, partying, going out with different men. Um, she always preached to me okay, how it's easy. Are you allowed to just assume things? You'll have an opportunity to cross-examine okay. uh, I feel, for lack of a better word, my daughter was brainwashed during those seven months to that dad was bad, that dad would hurt mom or her. My daughter was instructed to lock her car door anytime dad was near the car. My daughter believed I did not give her or my wife any financial money during those seven months, <laughs> which isn't true. John, you've given us a lot there. Let, let me break it down a little bit, if I can. Um, first of all, what were the circumstances of you and the defendant separating? I still don't know. Other than she just told me she didn't want to be a mom and mom anymore, never wanted kids. She only had kids because I wanted kids, and she wanted to be single and again and go party. She told me that early January, late December of 2015. What happened after she told you that? I was floored that she even said that about the kids, but um, she did. I've asked her numerous times after that. Why do you want a divorce? Why don't you want to be with our family anymore? And I never got an answer. Okay. And one of the things that we talked about this morning uh, was uh, the question of using the children to communicate to, as opposed to communicating with one another. We asked your wife about uh, a trip to the beach. Do you recall that yes. particular sure. trip? And can you tell us, do you remember it differently than your wife remembered it? Um, yeah, a little bit. She did take him to the beach. I agreed to that. Uh, I don't recall who asked. Usually the kids ask. Um, and what happened when she well, took when him to the beach? They left that morning. And later that evening, approximately sometime between 4 and 7 p.m., Luke, uh, the 13-year-old, who's 13 now, called me and asked if, he, if I could get them a motel for the night. And I said, why doesn't your mom have a place for you guys to stay? And I can't remember exactly everything, but I ended up getting them a motel. Is that uh, an unusual occurrence where the children uh, communicate to, to you? Oh, it's things a standard moments. occurrence. I keep asking. Whenever I text her, she doesn't respond. She'll respond one out of 15 times. If it's something in it for her, she'll respond. 
never answers the phone when I call her. Any other examples you can relate for the court as to questionable decision making of the defendant concerning the children? Um, so thusly, after those seven months, she had Jordan in her full control. When I got Jordan back, she was not the girl I knew. She was terrified of me. She was rude, disrespectful, selfish, spoiled, acted privileged. Um, her hair was bleached blonde, which is dangerous to do to a child, let alone a, an adult. Um, she felt the only reason she had any career at all was because of mom. Not that the career is all important here, but um, she believed she had a dance career and an acting career only because of mom. And I've continually told her that's not true, that it's because of her. How's her your relationship her? with Jordan now? Greatly different. How's it changed? I feel like a family with her again. She trusts me. She loves her brothers. Uh, she was very distant from her brothers and I when I got her back last August. Uh, we do things together. She actually wants her brothers to come to things that she does. She wants to spend time with us. We all trust each other. We play games together. You say she was rude uh, when she came back in your care and custody. In what respects? She was rude to her brother. She was rude to me. If I asked her to did do something, she wouldn't do it. Um, she would ignore me. And it was difficult for me for the first few months because, you know, I'm not an expert. I didn't know how best to get her out of that because mom was still texting her and calling her and talking to her. Um, do you have concerns that um, your testimony here today about the children or testimony given by your mother might be related back to the children? Oh, I know it will be. And that would concern light. you? In a negative light, yes, it concerns me. Every time the kids are with her, I'm concerned and worried. Would you want the court to make a specific order that you and the defendant not discuss what's been testified to yes, here with the children? definitely. And I would like to be able to communicate and co-parent with her should the court deem she should see the kids um, by able to communicate with her. She ignores my texts, um, ignores my phone calls. The kids always are in, the, in between us for the last four or five months. Now, you, you said you're concerned about the children being exposed to what's going on in court. Uh, have, has that concern um, been realized uh, since this case began? In other words, have things occurred which lead you to believe yeah, the they may be exposed me. to the... The kids believed that I threw mom out of the house, especially Jordan, the daughter. They believed I threw mom out of the house, changed the locks, didn't give her any money, um, would beat her physically, or or Did any of that her. happen? No, none of that happened. That I bribed the court, that I got lucky and got a judge that hates women, that um, there's other things, I just can't think of everything off the top of my head, but especially to Jordan. No. Uh, Let's talk about the physical custody. You want to primary physical custody. Why do you believe that's in the best interest of the kids? Because my I look out for the best kids, the, the best interest of the kids and their needs is my paramount goal. I don't go out and party. I don't have a girlfriend. I'm working just for the kids and to take care of them. They're in a stable environment. We're a family now. Um, they have their own rooms. They have friends in the neighborhood that they hang out with. They go to the schools in that neighborhood. They enjoy those schools. Now, the court has to address what they call the best interest factors, so I'm going to go through those with you a little bit. Um, what weight do you believe the children's wishes should be given by the court in making its decision on custody? Like my kids' opinion on what right. they would want? Are they old That's enough and mature enough to yeah, well, really weigh in on those I think they're mature things. enough. They're mature beyond their years. Um, but I don't think they have all the facts. And Plus, I don't think they can make 
the best decision they could without all the facts. Is there certain facts that they're not privy to that you think weigh on what should be considered yes, in mom's, their testimony? Mom's behavior, mom's role model skills, mom's just way what she does for a living, what the kids' needs aren't paramount to her. Her needs are paramount to Elena, not the kids. Now, the kids don't know that. They don't believe that. They, they, they love their mom. They just love, you know, love's blind sometimes. You took the TOEP class? Yes. And what did you learn, if anything, from that? I learned quite a bit. I mean, I thought I was doing good, but um, there's things I did know. But, you know, I didn't know I, I should talk to my kids and give them permission to let me know they're stressed out, um, which was a huge thing I learned. I also learned that Elena is doing basically the opposite of everything that Cope class says. So she, does, she does not communicate with me directly. She communicates through the kids almost always now. My kids tell me when she's showing up on Sunday. My kids call me and ask if they can stay longer. Uh, I'll text Elena and say, hey, Johnny has a football game at noon on Sunday. You can pick him up at 1 o'clock after his game, or I can bring him to you. What would you like to do? I get no response. In fact, one of the days, she showed up at noon with the cops, and she knew. She just showed up with the cops just to have drama. When was that? That was actually when my folks were here. Um, I was at the football game, and she showed up at noon with the police demanding uh, her kids, and my mom instructed them that you know they're at Johnny's football game. And I don't know the rest of the details, but has uh, defendant gone to any of the boys' football games? No, none. He doesn't go to any of their sporting events. Zero. The only one she came to was April of 2016. And she grabbed Johnny physically and would not let him go and said she's taking Johnny with him. And Johnny was crying, freaking out, flailing, trying to escape from mom. And I begged her to just let him go, but she wouldn't. Adults had to step in and the police were called. That was the only sporting event she came to either of the boys' in the last two years, year and a half. Do you try to promote the children's relationship with their mother? Yes. What do Originally you do? when the court said she could have them on Sunday, Neither boy wanted to go, which I know she's not going to believe, but neither boy wanted to go, and I encouraged them that, you know, she's your mom, and the court ruled that, and you guys should just go and make the best of it. Today, I believe they do want to go, but then they did not, mostly because she never saw the boys. She had Jordan for the seven months from January to August of 2016 under her control, never bothered to see the boys in those seven months. Then when I got full custody where she had asked my permission to see him, she didn't see him much at all then either. We talked about this morning a, a development that uh, you allowed the uh, defendant to take Jordan down for an audition that got canceled. Do you recall that? Yes. And can you tell the court what happened in that regard? There was, Jordan needs new headshots. Her headshots are two years old. Headshots are photographs used for agents and casting to look at a headshot. Um, Jordan asked me to let her mom take her because her mom's good at that. And I'll concede that. She is very good at style, graphics, creativity, you know, what looks good. And so I agreed. I let her into my house so they could pick out some clothes. And she also had an audition that Monday, and the, fo and the photo shoot was that Monday as well. I think there was a dance audition Sunday. I can't remember exactly. There were three things. Uh, I had to go to a football game with my sons. When I came back, I noticed my hard drive, my mobile hard drive was gone, that she had stolen it while I allowed her into the house to just pick out clothes. I texted her about it. And she goes, yeah, it's community property. That's my hard drive. And I go, no, that's not your hard drive. I just got my hard drive recovered and transferred to that mobile drive, which has all my designs on it for signage. I need that so I can sell signs. And she proceeded to laugh and whatever, send me LOLs and stuff. Um, 
I later texted her the receipt, and she did return it a week later. I don't know why, miraculously, I never thought I'd see it again. But in the interim, I then was informed that the audition was canceled. So I texted her, you don't need to go to California, the audition's canceled. The best she could have been, optimally, is an hour out of town. And she said, no, we're going anyways. You gave me three days, I'm leaving. And I go, no, you don't need to go. There's nothing for you to go there for. Uh, please come back. And she didn't come back. She came back three days later, and I had to go pick up Jordan at her house. How would you characterize your present relationship with the defendant? Well, I try. I try to be cordial. I try to be a core parent. I try to communicate with her. I've come numerous times offered that she could see the kids more than she does, just let me know. Uh, I get ignored. Is there conflict in your relationship at the present time? Oh, yeah. Um, what do you believe to be the cause of the conflict? Her, exclusively. I tried to text, I, I gave up texting her to ask, I, I did text her yesterday morning, or Saturday morning, asking her, Jordan's had a neighbor, Jordan has a girlfriend that lives really close to where she's living, and, and let her know that Jordan was there. I said, when do you want to pick up the boys? Also, we both have court Monday morning. Do you want me to pick them up Sunday night? Do you want me to have them go to Lexi's, which is the girlfriend that lives near Elena? And I got no response. Um, then the daughter texts me and says, Mom wants to know when to pick up the kids. This is like three hours later. And I go, well, the boys are ready whenever Mom wants to come. Half hour later, Jordan texts me, Mom's on her way. I told the boys Mom's on her way. Luke normally communicates with her, but Luke dropped his phone in the swimming pool and doesn't have a phone presently right now. Does uh, the defendant cooperate with you in trying to do what's best for the children? No. Can you give some examples uh, where she's failed to do that? I first got Jordan back in August uh, custody of her and trying to facilitate me taking the lead versus her taking the lead with her dance, with her agent, with the supporting documentation that needed to be done so that she could go on auditions in California. She would not cooperate with me at all. All she would text me is, good luck trying to be me. Uh, you have no idea what you're doing. Um, there's a Coogan checking account, which you're required to open for all child actors, where 15% of their pay goes into that account. I asked her for that account number. She would not supply that. She actually embarrassed us. with. She was on a set filming a Barbie commercial, and they wanted to know the Coogan account, and I couldn't provide it. I asked her agent to get it for me. And she instructed our agent, do not cooperate with him. He has no business being there. Um, I eventually got the Coogan account indirectly through uh, the producer of the Barbie commercial. He gave me a copy of it. And I've used that since to book, to su supply the documentation on her jobs when she goes on set. Um, her agent wanted a common email where Agents could just email one email address and not have one for mom, one for dad, one for her. They just wanted one email address. And Jordan had Jordan Berlin 777. I asked her for the password of that so that we could share that email with the daughter's agent so we both know what's going on. She said, absolutely not. F you. You don't need that. So I had to create a new email, Jordan Berlin USA, that the agents now use for Jordan. I gave her the password so she can have access to it and see what's going on. What, what about medical care? Has there been any cooperation in getting children medical care? Well, I've paid for their medical care through Obamacare uh, for the last, we've always had health insurance. And Elena is presently covered with health insurance. I what gave her a health card in January said, and explained it all to her in an email or a text saying, here's our new health card. It's an HMO plan. You have to go to certain doctors. That's all that's allowed in Nevada is HMOs. We have to go to doctors on the list. Um, and she goes, great, because I have a bunch of doctors I need to go to. And I thought, okay, great. There you go. I'm talking about the children, though. Is, like, have the children needed any care that 
yeah, required cooperation. When I was in uh, San Diego with the two boys, they were both in a football tournament, flag football tournament, that I was the coach of. While we were there, she called me and said, Jordan has an ear infection. I need to take her uh, to the doctor. Where's my insurance card? And when was I, this? This was, uh, I want to say May or maybe April of this year. It might have been later. It might have been June. It wasn't that long ago. I think it was June. Um, I told her I gave her the card that it's with Health Plan of Nevada and that um, CVS Pharmacy has us on record for the prescription. That you can go to any CVS, they'll just pull it up. Uh, she commenced berating me, saying I was lying. Um, and I guess ended up taking her to a quick care, which is a $55 copay, and called me while she was there saying, you need to pay this. I'm here now. I have no money. And I'm like, Elena, I'm, I'm on a football field coaching football. I, I have no way of paying. Um, she called me a few more times and texted me some bad stuff, and I guess she ended up getting the prescription. Then after she gets the prescription, she goes to CVS and calls me and says, hey, you need to pay for this prescription or tell me what insurance is. And I, I said, I told you, CVS should have it on record. Um, I'm in San Diego. I have no, I don't have the insurance stuff with me. I have no way of helping you. I'm sorry. So that passed. The kids went over and she took them all to uh, the water park in Henderson, something bay. There's a big water park in Henderson. And when you have an ear infection, you should never go in the water. She knows that. But she took Jordan into the water. A few days later, when she was back in my care, her ear started to hurt again. I texted mom, hey, what quick care did you take her to? Can you send me a copy of her prescription so I can get it refilled? And she would not do either of those things. All she texted me back was, you need to pay me $55, and I'm going to lay now. Okay, let's not worry about that right now. I need to get her prescription refilled. Her ears hurt. And, and again, I got either ignored or another text saying, um, you need to reimburse me the $55 and the $25 for the, the, the thing, the, the prescription. And this went on for about six hours, and then I just ended up taking Jordan to quick care again and getting another prescription, and since got her ear infection cleared up. But that was just an example of her needs above Jordan's needs. It didn't matter Jordan had an ear infection. All that mattered was she wanted $55. What uh, financial support has she provided the children uh, since you had custody of them in August? Other than feeding them when they're at her house, zero. Do you want the court to impose a child support obligation on her if you sure. granted custody? Yes. Do you feel it would benefit the children to do yes. that? I mean, I'm struggling. How Financially. Is, how is the state of your health at the present time? Any health issues that would impact your ability to care for the children? No. Do you have any concerns about Elena's health that would impact her ability to care for the children? Like physical health or mental health? Either one. Well, mental health, yes. Physical health, I don't know. I haven't been with her for a year and a half. I know she has. She's been taking different medications. She's had infections of her vagina. She's had things down there that she probably doesn't want me to mention, but I, I don't know her physical health right now. Were you uh, surprised at the uh, defendant's testimony? She's only seen... Uh, the therapist twice since uh, the yes. court ordered that last night. Yeah, and if I was her, I'd be going once a day. Has Elena ever been physically abusive to the children? Yes. And you tell the court uh, those times that you recall that that occurred, telling us when well, they the, occurred and what occurred? The time I mentioned uh, she physically was restraining Johnny for, uh, God, it felt like 10 minutes, and the poor kid was crying. Um, and she would not let him go. Uh, I wanted to step in, but I I was torn because I knew if I stepped in, it would get uglier, and then the police would arrest me, and he had a game coming up, and all the parents were watching. It was very embarrassing. And the guy running the whole league actually came up with other parents and begged her to let him go and said, hey, let me take Johnny 
unless then you guys can talk and she finally agreed to that and once we got Johnny out of her possession she took off just before the police showed up any other examples of physical abuse of the children yes I've seen her slap Jordan while she's homeschooling her at least twice do you recall when that was those occasions last year both times 2015 2016 how did Jordan react when her mom slapped her? cried do you recall what was going on preceding that that may have motivated the slap? I think she just has a short temper now and she gets upset if, if she isn't, if someone doesn't completely do what she says or gets frustrated if it's not going well. Has she been verbally abusive to the children? Yes, all the time. In Especially you? Mikey, the older son. What about the three that are at issue today? Can you give the court some examples of times mom's been verbally abusive? Again, well, I didn't see the court. this, but again. I'm asking for what you know. Yeah, I mean, the kids have told me stuff, but then that would be hearsay, I guess. But um, I'm just asking for what you've no observed. No, I mainly hitting Jordan, grabbing Johnny that one day, but Johnny's told me a couple things that happened. Have you had occasion to seek a temporary protective order uh, against your wife? Yes. When did you do that? Um, February 15th, 2016. I remember it well because it's the day after Valentine's Day. What occurred at that time that led you to seek a TPO? I was coaching the kids football at Desert Breeze Park. It's a park very close to the house. She was at the house with Jordan. Um, for some reason she was being nice. I invited us, her and Jordan and me and the two boys to go to dinner. She agreed. When we got home it was a different kind of vibe. She didn't want to go. Um, and I noticed my racquetball racket was missing. I asked her if she knew about it. She goes, yeah, you don't need it. Uh, anyways, I have it. And I go, well, it's not your racket. It's, it's so silly. It's a stupid racket. But anyways, so I'm getting um, into the car, and she sucker punches me as hard as she could. I can't believe I bled that much, but I was bleeding. Um, and then she just went into, like, psycho mode. She had my daughter start filming me telling Jordan, please film me, daddy's gotten crazy, he's going to hurt me, film me, and I mean, I, I mean, it's comical now, but it was like, man. So Jordan uh, was present when this occurred? All the kids were. Luke actually saw her hit me, but he won't admit it because it was too traumatizing. I saw Luke standing in the garage while I got hit. Um, Jordan's filming it while we're back into the house. I'm bleeding all over the place. I asked her to leave. She wouldn't leave. Um... Did you call the police? Yeah, so eventually I called the police. Uh, she left again just in the nick of time. The police showed up. They advised me to go get a TPO and, and change the locks on the door. And I go, well, doesn't she have a right to be here? And he's like, did she change her mailing address? And I said, yes, she's, at all, she's changed her address. She actually asked to be off the lease, which I removed her from the lease so she wouldn't be liable for any rent. So the next day I went down and filed a TPO and I got the locks changed that night. Now, your mother testified to some calls of the police out to your house. It, have the children been present for those times that your mother testified to? Yeah, pretty much. They, they've been there every time the police have been called. What effect did, do you perceive them at? that having on the children when the police come out? Well, like that's that. very difficult for them to understand. I mean, they're torn. You know, do you have an understanding of why she called the police uh, on no those idea. occasions? No idea. She mother... showed up on a Wednesday. I was taking Jordan, her, our daughter, to L.A. My brother was coming over to stay with the two boys, and she shows up around 3.30 after school demanding the kids uh, and calls the police. And the only time she's by court order to see him is on a Sunday. So it, I have no idea why she was there on Wednesday to grab the kids. Uh, the police showed up. 
They eventually asked her to leave. She left. She also called the police on that Saturday night. Um, this, my mother referenced. Again, no idea why. It was 8 at night. She shows up wanting the kids with the police there. How did she appear to you on that Saturday night? I don't think I came downstairs. I just said call the police and lock the door. I don't recall even. I didn't want to see her. Now, are you able to provide for the children's needs, whether they yes. be physical, emotional, or developmental? Yeah. Uh, the, the Jordan's like night and day from a year ago. What, what type of uh, things do you do for the children now that uh, they are in your primary custody? Uh, I feed them. When they're in school, I make their lunch. I take them to school. I pick them up from school. I go to their uh, parent-teacher conferences. Um, I do things with them, take them to trampoline parks, uh, movies. You work on their studies? Yes, I homeschool my daughter. I make my kids do their homework. I actually have a fun spelling drill I do with Johnny, the youngest. We throw a football while I quiz him on his spelling words. Uh, and he's gotten almost an A on every spelling test. And you work from home? Yes. Is that assisting it, being able to do all that? Yes. When, when do you get time to do work? Whenever I can. Usually either very early in the morning or late at night. And, um, and it's... It's harmed the business. She's harmed the business. So how are the kids doing school Uh They're doing, Johnny did really well. He got all A's and B's. Luke, I think this divorce has affected him the most. He hasn't done as well in school as he could, but I cut him some slack. You know, he got C's and B's. Um, Jordan, it's been more difficult because she went from, in my opinion, completely brainwashed to a great child now um, and it was tough for her to focus on homeschooling with mom texting her and calling her all the time um, so she got all C's and I think she got an F in English how was she doing uh, that period from January until uh, she came back in your care well, under her mom's care, how was she doing academically then? She had to go to summer school, and I'm sure it wasn't fun for her um, having mom as a tutor, although she'll defend her mom, at least she used to. I don't know if she still would, but that's her mom. Are the children provided health insurance? Yes. You provide that? Yes. And Elena's. And you are the only one at this time financially supporting the children? Yes. Have there arisen any recent difficulties in trying to work and provide for the kids? Yes. Did you tell the court uh, when that occurred? Uh, a few times. Um, I have, over the last year and a half, tried to help her. I've offered to pay her for designs. Usually she'll say okay and then either doesn't do them, ignores me, or says pay me um, so I'm not a designer I can do everything else with the sign business I'm an accountant I'm a salesperson I can run a business I've run one for 30 years but I'm not a designer I'm not creative in that way so that was difficult to go from having no designer to continue to sustain an income to support us with no designs and she would not help she also, although I offered, let's just stay in business. You want a divorce, that's fine. Go do whatever you need to do in life. But um, let's continue to operate the business, and we can decide. You know, I, I tried to be reasonable. But she closed the account, drained $2,000 out of it in February of 2016. Your mother would have some say in that, would you know? Well, now, because that was... Uh, 
in her name, that business, Signs West Outdoor LLC. So I had my mom offered to form a company, Signs West Las Vegas, and we had to open that checking account, and I had to start all, a whole new business. When uh, was that? February of 2016. Shortly thereafter, uh, I mistakenly would allow her into my house, stupidly now, but, you know, I was trusting. But th and then she stole checks, signed checks that my mom would leave so I could pay suppliers as needed. Um, and she stole those checks. She admitted to stealing those checks, told me it's community property. That's half my company. And I'm like, no, that's not your company anymore. It's my mom's. But anyways, so we had to close that account and open up a new checking account. Uh, you know, which takes time and energy uh, for no reason. Does the, uh, does the business have an email? Yes. And have you been able to use the email? Oh, about a month ago, somehow, I don't know if she broke into my house, crawled through the doggy door, but somehow I no longer had access to my Gmail, business Gmail, Science West Outdoor at Gmail which is my emails for business for the last six years. All, you know, recent emails, clients might email me a year later. I would have saved emails as you can, like, put them in different buckets, if you will, of different types of clients, real estate or whatever, whatever have you, and she will not return it. I offered her $500 cash to return it to me because I know she says she needs money. I don't believe she does, but she says she needs money. Uh, she wouldn't do that either. And she has no use for that email address other than to harm me intentionally. And I told her, you're hurting your kid's source of income because that's what pays our the bills. And that didn't matter to her. Um, then she stole checks again about two months later, a whole booklet of checks, which I suspect my daughter stole them for her. This was back in the middle of 2016 again. Um, and again, we had to close the account and open another account. And the bank's like going, you guys. What, what is your arrangement with your mother as far as uh, compensation for the services you provide the company? Well, it generally generates 5000 a month in income, and I am paid whatever it makes. Did uh, Elena's spending uh, cause any problems as the business uh, began to struggle? Yeah, I mean, she was obsessed with Jordan. Jordan had to have private dance lessons, acting lessons, cirque lessons, trapeze lessons, silk lessons, uh, attend dance studios. Uh, and I kept telling her, you know, we, c we can't keep doing this. We're not making what we used to make. And somehow I would pull it off and get everything paid, but it was very difficult and stressful on me. Did you make uh, available the court directed uh, ITEX uh, funds for defendant to have uh, yes. counsel? Yes. And when did you do that? Well, she's had access to ITEX since ITEX, since we um, were married. Can you look at Exhibit 6? Tell us if you can identify that. Yeah, that's an ITEX statement. From May of end of May 2017, and then a history of ITEX transactions from August 16 to I'm assuming May of 17. And how were these records generated? 
I printed them off the online iTex uh, website yeah. from our account. Have you reviewed the records that are attached to uh, Exhibit 6? Yes. Are they accurate? Yes. Move for admission of Exhibit 6 here. Admitted. I have checked those um, documents are fraudulent and haven't been authenticated. Okay. I'm going to take a look at them. I believe he just authenticated them. That doesn't count as authentication, him saying that they're true. So you retrieved, um, I'm looking at Bates number 37 through 48? Yes, Your Honor. And you, did you retrieve those records? Yes. The handwriting is mine, but the printed writing is from the online website of our account. Your Honor, um, but I've seen the um, printed statements, and that's not what they look like. They all have a letterhead. What he did was he copied and pasted it, so that way he could manipulate it. You did testify to all the charges on here that you did. Today. No, I testified to some of the charges that were mentioned. We provided these. Uh, what was that mentioned were all the charges that you have made on our community. On June 6, he's never filed any objection to their authenticity. Yes. Objection, Your Honor. I did file an objection to the authenticity. As a matter of fact, I did. I had this right here motion I filed, this motion to continue, and this ORO motion. And it, right in here, I do object to it. So that no, is not true. No timely objection, Your Honor. Yes, it was timely. As a matter of fact, I, um, I filed these papers before opposing counsel filed his. He's the one that missed the deadline, not me. These were produced, you said? June 6 is the 16.2. Also, I would like noted on the record that um, the opposing counsel filed, filed their 16.2 disclosures 11 months or so after they were supposed to, according to the law. So if we're going to talk about not meeting deadlines, that one should definitely be mentioned. And Here's your 16.2 disclosure. I have it right here. I filed it with this oral motion along with my list of exhibits that I brought here when? with me today. You filed it when? I filed it on 7-12-2017. It also has all the exhibits that I wanted to enter today that, that I have timely? with me. Yes? 7-12-2017. Is that timely? Yes, it was timely. How is it timely? It, I, well, when I looked at the rules, it was in time. To what it had said, to what was. But his aren't timely, and he submitted them before you did. No, his aren't I timely, but yours are timely. Mine were submitted before his. They're dated. Oh, my sixteen point two. Is that what you're talking about? I wasn't aware that I had to specifically do sixteen point two, but either was opposing counsel. But they still have not done it. They still have not done it completely. They, they, um, uh, they still have. Did never you file a motion with the discovery commission? To this day, they've never filed a detail, a detailed FDF. Did you file? A motion with the discovery yes, commission. Right Are oil. you listening to my words? Mm -hmm. Did you file a motion with the discovery commissioner? No, I don't even know anything about what a discovery commissioner is for. Um, by the time these were all filed, and by the time I knew how to even look on the court docket, by the time I realized I was going to be forced to be pro se and I figured out how to even look things up on the court docket, you had already closed discovery, and I didn't have an option at that point. Your Honor, we were here on May 4th. We the court directed both parties to file 16.2. We did on June 6th, and not receiving anything from the uh, defendant, I did send her a letter June 9th telling her that she needed to comply with 16.2 and laid out the typical documents that we would request. I object, Your Honor. Um, we've still not received any 16.2. The letter that he wrote to me was was a very, um, actually, I would love to have that letter read because it's very disrespectful, and it, and it accused me of doing uh, several things that had not been done. Um, and I did everything I could to file correctly. Not only did I do that, but I also emailed a copy to Mr. Yurik as well. 
to make sure that I covered all of my bases. I'm happy to show the court the letter if the court's interested. And I would love to have that letter read because in the, in that letter he um, accuses me of um, of not um, of this being a, a um, repetitive thing that I haven't done, and I had I had everything that the court has suggested for me to do. I have done. There is nothing that I have not done. For what purpose are you offering Exhibit Six? Just to show that uh, the ITEX funds, their use, and that uh, she has had the ability to use them for attorney's fees. And she's, uh, she's already conceded use them for other means. She did concede to using some for her medical. Are those on these statements? Yes. And I, I don't know that we would concede that they're medical. Um, she said Botox. Uh, September 28, 2016. That's on page 38. Right. Uh, there's Honor, a Harmony uh, Salon and Spa, $65. Right. And then there's a $2,200 spa charge. Contact lenses, colored contact Objection, lenses. Objection, that wasn't right. me. That was my daughter. That, and um, John had took, taken her there. And um, I would also like to note that every time I did make one of those charges, Mr. Urich uh, had approved it because there, David Heller, the um, representative from ITEX, was called every time, and I have evidence in emails of those calls and proof that that happened. Mr. Anderson, where does it say on here who is the person using the funds or that particular transaction? It doesn't. I, I'm not sure that it, it does, Your Honor. It's just a list of transactions. It doesn't say who initiated them. Okay. I'm not going to admit it. Number six. Yes, oh, six. Thank you. I did have six down. Thank you. As we may proceed, Your Honor, are we ready? Go ahead, yes. As we sit here today, is there any property to be divided between you and the defendant that you're aware of? No, we both have our cars in our possession. She's had a year and a half to take whatever she wanted out of the house. She's gotten all of her clothes out of there. She took in anything that she could hawk of value, including a $2,000 full-length leather jacket that I owned that she stole. She stole a $2,500 video arcade game. She stole all the power tools. And everything else is either the kitchen table, it's all old furniture, or the kid's stuff, or computers. Uh, she did want a heavy credenza, which she's more than welcome to have. It's very heavy. She knows what I'm talking about. And as part of your compliance with 16.2, uh, did you prepare the document attached as Exhibit 21? Yes. And is that an accurate inventory to your knowledge of the personal property that exists? Yes, and my best guess at a value. I'm not an expert. Commit for admission of Exhibit 21, Your Honor. When did you prepare this, sir? Uh, approximately two months ago. It was part of our 16.1 production, Your Honor. Okay, it's admitted. And some of these property items are actually, would be fair to say they belong to the children? Yes. You mentioned the coat. Uh, can you tell the court more about the coat? Uh, I bought a full-length leather coat before we were married for $2,000 and a pair of leather pants. I wore it on our wedding day. And she took it out of my closet in my room under the guise 
not under guys, but she called while I was with the kids at Sky Zone. And it felt like an odd call, like, hey, you guys still at Sky Zone? I said yes, and it just felt weird because she would never call to do that. So I'm assuming that's when she took it. When was Verifying that? I wasn't there roughly early to mid-February of 2016. Did you file a police report? I tried. They wouldn't. They said it's community property. And I said, no, I owned it before the marriage. And they said, well, I'll deal with it in a divorce. So would it be your request that you each take the respective vehicles that you're driving? Yes. You know, I think the defendant testified to driving the Chevy Cruze. Do you know what year it is? 2014. And what do you drive? The 2016 Nissan Frontier. And is there any real property to be divided? No. Do you have any interest in any business that could be divided at this time? No. You could uh, review Exhibit 9. You prepared a financial affidavit in May of this year? Yes. And at Page 76 of that exhibit, did you give your estimates as to the net equity that are in the respective vehicles? Yes. And you indicated 3000 for each? Yes. You mentioned in there some furniture and computers. Uh, what does, does that relate to? Uh, there's a sofa in Ottoman. Approximately four or five years old. There's a uh, a picnic table, kitchen table. Are they reflected in Exhibit 21 as well? They should be. If you look at Exhibit 21, what items from there would you like to receive? Everything but the heavy desk credenza, which is item three, if you go in order top to bottom. What about the laptop one and two? Yes, those are in her possession. Sorry, yeah. You she do. already has those, that's fine. Yeah, she can have those. If she wants them, she has them. What about the Cocktail Arcade Legends video game? Yep, she already has that. Took it. As far as debts, uh, is there any debts to be divided between the two of you at this time? Um, I mean, there was a couple charge cards, a Target, a Kohl's, but I have been paying on those for a year, paid them down, she charged them back up, that I, you know, I don't know the law, but uh, there's those two, I think the Target 700 max is the limit on it, I don't know what it is today. Uh, and the calls I think was a thousand. I don't know what it's at today. I estimated it back here, but I don't have access to those anymore. She changed the passwords. Uh, there was a credit card used to buy this laptop from Apple. I think it was 2500 I was paying on that, uh, but the passwords and everything's been changed. I, I'm assuming she's either making payments on them or blew them off. What, what is Exhibit 17? Can you... Review that and tell us, you know. That's my personal Capital One account in my name, I guess. It's jointly then if it's community property because the, the other credit cards I aforementioned are all in her name. What would be your proposal for I take the Capital One the and debts. she takes the other three. Would that be equitable? In my eyes, uh, she has the asset, the laptop that cost three grand from Apple. The credit card going with that's twenty five hundred. The Target and Kohl's. Don't know what she's charged after I was paying them down. I would assume all for her. Uh, that would seem fair to me. 
What is Exhibit 15? Oh, uh, that's a life insurance policy for a million dollars in on me. Does it have any cash value? No, it's a term policy. And how long have you had that policy? It's 2006. Who's the beneficiary? Presently? Presently. Uh, it's divided equal to me among my parents and my two brothers. And they have been instructed to use instructed to use that money to pay for the kids. Is it true that since your marriage to the defendant to, to your likes, tastes, and interests have grown apart. Somewhat, I guess, yeah. I mean, we still do like the same things, but we don't share together. Not together? together. No. And is it true that uh, your differences have caused you to s physically separate and no longer live together? Yes. Are you incompatible in marriage with one another? No. Incompatible? Yes. And is there any chance that you two can reconcile? No. Is it your request that the court uh, grant you a decree of divorce? Yes. Who's Lennon Bond? That's a uh, Facebook page of hers with all men. It appears to be some type of a uh, John quotes friends list. You offered a uh, printout from that today. Uh, how did you get that? A friend of mine called me on the phone and told me about it. When did you learn of it? Three, two, three months ago, maybe. And were you able to pull that off online? Yeah, I could go right onto her Facebook page. I can't see nothing other than the friends and her picture. Does that identity create any concerns about the children? Yes, greatly. Why? Because that's her priority. Men, attention, money, money, and money. But she would leave the kids in a heartbeat if one of those people called and said, hey, I have some money, come see me. She actually did that one, I could tell you a story. Is there anything else you think the court should know in coming to the decisions it has to make here today? Yeah, regarding the COPE class, I found that extremely helpful. And I hope she did take it. I hope she listened and paid attention. I don't know if she really took it. Uh, but in that class, it said you should wait at least a year before introducing children to new lovers. She waited 10 minutes, and she has had multiple lovers within the last year and objection. a half. Objection. What is your objection? What is your objection? My objection is that he's uh, assuming things again and uh, lying. You have well, and also, this is a no fault state, so it. Uh, <laughs> you have personal knowledge. Yes, very. What is your personal knowledge? In March, approximately St. Patrick's Day of 2016, I was invited to attend my daughter's viewing party for an episode of Dance Moms. That was approximately, what, two and a half months from us separating. At that time, she invited her current live-in boyfriend, Jason Lopez, the attorney she aforementioned that paid for her breast implants, after I was refunded the money because they didn't want to deal with her. He was invited to that um, and had planned to take all the kids to his house afterwards. I objected. I objected um, firmly. And she started swinging at me. 
So that's a guy I know she was living with. He actually posted on Facebook they were getting married. And my daughter was calling his son her new brother. She had no problems with any of that. Then I know firsthand of a poker player named Brandon, I think his last name's Gerson, that she has been dating prior and still does while she's living with Gilby, but none of these are boyfriends, close quotes, because she doesn't like to label them as, as that. They're just all Johns, in my opinion. And uh, she borrowed money from him. Are, he bought uh, my daughter me clothes. Your Honor, are these a false allegation that allowed to keep continuing with absolutely no evidence? What is your personal knowledge about this? My daughter told me I mean, that he bought her clothes. I mean, how far is this going to go on with no evidence at all? I don't think my daughter would lie. That's a lie right there. You think Jordan would lie? I'll move on, yeah. Thank you. Uh, back to the co class. So she's been with a man ever since she left the family. That isn't good. That really confuses the children. She uses the children to communicate with me versus communicating with me directly, another part of the cult class that she continues to do and ignores my text and forces the kids to be the go-between between us. She creates conflicts between us with the children present, another thing it says not to do. Um, and she shows up late every Sunday, never at 9 a.m., which tells the kids they're not important enough to her to show up on time. And you had actually instructed me, if she doesn't show up by 9 a.m., go about my day. But I don't, because the kids, you know, say they want to see their mom, so I let her show up late every Sunday. What uh, would you like the schedule to be at this time? Do you? <laughs> I worry every time the kids are with her. I don't know if she's doing more harm than good. She tells them things that she told my daughter, that dad threw me out of the house, dad wouldn't give me any money, dad beats me, uh, and blames everything that's happening right now on me, the courts, uh, her so-called friends, all the people that are jealous of her. Nothing's her fault. Do you, do you have a schedule now? for holidays or no, special yeah, occasions? No, schedule. She had them July 4th. The kids wanted to go over there July 4th because she said she was having a big July 4th party, and it turned out to be no one there, a few people. And there would be other kids there. So she ignored my tax, so I had to believe the kids, and I let them go. Uh, nothing bad happened as far as I know, but there was no big party. There were no other kids there. It was just them. And the girl up the street, that's a friend of my daughter's, as far as what the kids told me afterwards. If, it, if I had my choice, I would have full custody, both physical and legal. The kids are, we're a family now. They live at home. Um, you know, having her, having every Sunday with her, like, interrupts a weekend for me. Um, there's times the kids have football games, and she turns it into a big conflict. She knows they play football. Would you like an occasional weekend with kids? Yeah. I would prefer she gets them one weekend a month, and, that, and then I've always told her she can see them whenever she wants, just not overnight. But she never takes me up on that. I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. Ms. Eric, cross-examination. say something to the court um, because I think it, it just need to make sure you're aware of something that happened to me last night. Um, <laughs> well, you can tell me when you testify right now. We're scheduling this okay. accordingly in an organized fashion. It, and now it is your turn to cross-examine him. Okay. okay. It's just making it incredibly hard because of what happened. I had all this organized according to an index, which I've Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. You know you can't use your exhibits. You didn't give them to me.
sorry, I'm looking for my, my outline. Yeah, well, <laughs> I have all this evidence that proves every that sorry, I I can't say that, I'm sorry. Sure, if you had time over the lunch break to do yeah, that. Yeah, I, I know what. Uh, oh God. Go ahead and ask him your questions. Yes, I'm, I'm trying to find the outline that I just had. Um, but you need to go ahead and ask him your questions. Okay. You should have prepared during the I, lunch I break. I didn't prepare it. That's why I went to your, oh, Hold on. Ms. Yurik. Oh, yes, ma'am. Proceed with your questions. Okay. Um, I'm looking for my questions. Yeah, you've said that already. Go ahead and ask him questions. Yes, ma'am. Please, can I just please find my outline? I have an outline of, qu of questions, ma'am. It's um, very important. Um, like you should have been prepared. I, I am, am prepared. It. I had it right before we came in. You'll have to proceed without your outline, Ms. Yurik. We can't wait for you I, to I find it. You have stacks and stacks of paper there. There's so much to. There's so much I need to be focused since I can't enter all these exhibits. Um, can I please? Can you just give me a minute to find the outline, please? Please. Oh my. God. I can't believe. This. I can't use the outline that I that I need. <laughs> it has all my case law and everything on it. Pull yourself together. Drink some more water. Drink some water. Your Honor, can I please look for the out? I it, it's here. I have a, a I have a twenty page outline. I just had it.
can't believe this. <laughs> I'm giving you time to look. What's that orange folder you haven't touched? Thank you. We're not going to wait forever, though. Uh, <laughs> oh, here it is. Okay. okay, I'm so sorry. Thank you for giving me the time to look for that. question them on the testimony just said, right? Very good. Yes, that's true. Okay. What are the business entities that you own or are affiliated with? I don't own any business entity in terms of affiliated with if you mean manage or a friend might own it or a relative, the ones currently in existence are Signs West Las Vegas. All the other businesses you mentioned are since out of business. I can elaborate on the tree of ownership. Just to answer the question, sir. But Signs West Las Vegas is the only one I'm affiliated with. Uh, why then are you asking me for an email for Science West Outdoor? That's just that, well, that used to be the name of our company. And I have continued to use that email because that's what all the clients know as my email. I probably have, without exaggeration, 5,000 contacts in that email that have that email address. For me to email all of them and say, hey, don't use that email no more, use this one, it'll probably go to spam most likely and would be an, a huge task to call all those people and let them know. You know that. You've never used that email. Are you operating a business out of Science West Outdoor right now? No. You don't have any invoices with Science West Outdoor on them? Not in the last year. Not in the last year. So when when's the last time you had an invoice from Science West Outdoor? Early 2016. What what's early 2016? Can you be more accurate? First quarter, please? January, February, March. So are you saying that you don't have emails of you doing business through Science West Outdoor with other people? I shouldn't. I've been doing business at Science West Las Vegas. Are you, are you doing business with other companies? Yes, lots. Selling signs to them. Why aren't they a part of your FDF? What's FDF? Your financial disclosure form. Well, they are. The cash flow from that is in my monthly cash flow. Why aren't the other businesses that you're doing invoices and making money off of a part of your FDF? There are no other businesses I'm making money off of, only Signs West Las Vegas. Do you work for High Impact Signs? As a, as a commission salesperson. Do you get invoices and payments from them? I get a referral fee from them to Signs West Las Vegas. Do you get invoices and payments through those sign shops for jobs? Jobs they do that I sell for them, that's a difference between me doing the job myself as Science West Las Vegas. Are there invoices marked in a Science West Outdoors name from those companies and more? No. Not in the last year, yes, of course, and from 2000. What are, the, what are the businesses that you are supposedly just working for that you haven't disclosed well, in your financial disclosure? I'm not a licensed sign contractor anymore, so if I sell a sign that requires a contractor's license and or a permit, I sell it as a salesperson for Vegas Signs, 
or high impact signs, depending on the sign. Usually electrical signs go to Vegas signs, and anything more complicated goes to high impact signs, and they pay me a commission, if you will. Are those the only companies you're working for? Well, what time frame? What do you mean, what time frame? What other companies are you working for? That's it, presently. Oh, that's it. The question is vague. I want you to specifically name all of the companies that you were working for. What time frame? The time, how about just for our separation? How about just that? And then we can talk about another time frame. I worked for Signs West Outdoor LLC, the company you owned. I work presently for Signs West Las Vegas, the company my mother owns. I sell as a commission salesperson for Vegas signs and high impact signs. That is it. For a marriage, did you work for other companies? Well, I didn't work for them. Prior to Vegas signs, yes, and the electrical signs, I sold to Diamond Head signs. After that, it was Patrick signs. After that, it was all city signs, and then Vegas signs, now high impact signs. I'll s as a salesperson. Are you a part or affiliated with Big, Big Printing Las Vegas with your brother? No, I have no ownership in that company. Not affiliated, do nothing for it. Oh, you don't have um, emails in, from Big Printing Las Vegas? I probably have, because he actually ran a couple credit cards for me when you I couldn't take... have or you do have? Objection. Well, I don't know what email I used. I don't know what email I used, but Mark ran a couple credit cards when we didn't take credit cards anymore. So you're admitting on the stand that Mark runs the credit cards for you through his company? Yeah, a nominal amount. When someone wants to pay with a credit card... Are you admitting that you, Mark runs credit cards for you for the through his company? Yeah, once or twice, yes. But I got the money. He didn't. I don't I understand the question. I have a lot more question. than once or twice here. Okay. Um, solar West, what's Solar West? That was a solar company when um, 2009, when Science West Inc. was forced into bankruptcy by the IRS, that I always wanted to start a solar company. Who's it, Jimmy, Jimmy. Myers? Jimmy Mays formed that company, and it never got off the ground. It's nothing. So you're not an officer or have anything to do with no, it? No, no. I might have been listed on the initial articles so, uh, of incorporation. If, if I were to look that up on the business entity network, your name wouldn't pop up? It may. I might have been listed as an initial incorporator or owner, for all I know. He formed. He put it together. It never came to fruition. We never did anything with it. He moved back to Denver. What's Clearwater Management? That was a company that was set up, owned by the three brothers, of which I was one, and that's how we got paid. That was our management company to manage Signs West, Inc. It was a way to minimize taxes. Signs West, Inc. would pay Clearwater X dollars. Clearwater would then pay Mark, Michael, and myself X dollars as our pay. Have you ever bought cold coins during our marriage? Yes. Where are they? They've all been liquidated to keep the business afloat and to pay our personal expenses for two, two to three years after the recession hit and everybody was out of work. Where's the evidence of the liquidation? Um, well, I'm sure I could get records from Heritage Auctions sold most of them. You know that. <laughs> Where are they bought from? Where were all the coins bought from? Yes. Uh, different places. Here it is auctions mainly. Uh, I think how there's many, a how much how many coins were there? Like quantity? Yes. Uh, maybe eighty ish. Eighty. Eighty so coins. Were, so we didn't own a safe completely filled with them in the bottom of four of our closet, two foot by three foot. You're saying that that that. That didn't happen. Did we? Did we not? Have, did we have a safe in the bottom of a four closet, two foot by three foot deep, completely filled with coins? We had a safe, but it was not two by three feet. How big was it? It was a cylinder, approximately a foot deep and eight inch in diameter. What if I told you I had a picture of a safe and that's not an accurate measurement? If you showed it to me, I would confirm whether that was it or not. I've seen it. I opened it.
obviously I'm not allowed to show you any of my evidence. So how much money did, did you have to, did you get from these gold coins when you liquidated them? Somewhere between three and 400,000. And you're saying there, there's no like paper trail of this? Yeah, there's plenty of paper trails. Where, where is that found? Where's the paper trail found? I might have some of the records at home, but you can always, I can always get them from Heritage Auctions. They sold most of the coins. Uh, about 200,000 of that went back into Signs West to keep us in business, and about 100,000 of that paid our personal expenses for, for uh, two months, two years. This is a community asset that should have been disclosed in your, dis in your financial disclosure. It's, Why wasn't it's it? It's objection. It's gone. Argumentative. It no longer exists. It's okay, been liquidated and spent. It. Why wasn't the gold coins disclosed in your financial disclosure? Because I don't have them anymore. They're gone. They've been liquidated and sold. When did you liquidate them, sir? 2009 to 2011. So you're saying there's not a single gold coin left anywhere? No. I just have to take your word for that, sir? Yeah. The I mean, word of I don't know where. <laughs> the word of someone that's very honest, right? Um, yeah, I am very honest. Mr. York, have you ever been arrested for grand larceny? Objection relevance. The relevance is of whether or not he's honest and whether or not he's a, a business An arrest is not to admissible evidence of anything. What do you mean? Um, I was grilled on uh, who I could have been dating or not. I have, uh, I'm asking him a direct question about whether or not he's fit enough to parent and take, have the management over my daughter's uh, business account, her Coogan account. Were you um, convicted of grand larceny? No. And in 2011, you weren't, um, you didn't go to um, court for grand larceny, extortion, conspiracy to commit a crime? Objection, going to court is irrelevant. How is that irrelevant? It, it says what kind of character he has. Um, I've been totally on a, a, a hung, hung, hung up to dry for my character. Do you agree no that when, when you are accused of a crime, you're innocent until proven guilty? Um, I've been accused of quite a lot of things in this room with no evidence. So um, I don't think that applies in this courtroom today. Okay, well it, it does. Has, it definitely hasn't been applied to me. How do you know I haven't made my decision? Okay, because um, I have evidence that shows what I'm asking him and he has absolutely no evidence of the allegations against me. And this definitely points to his character and it definitely points to whether or not he's fit to manage my daughter's business accounts. All these failed businesses and all these cases that went to court for his business fraud that he's been doing under my name. I don't think you'd like the answer that he's I'm been doing you. business fraud under my name. I found evidence and proof of it, and um, I just want him to answer whether or not these cases happen and exist. They point to his character and his ability to uh, manage my daughter's her her business and her funds. Yes, yeah, we're referencing evidence that she did no, timely I'm not present. Referencing evidence. I'm asking him if he went to court for these reasons. I'm pointing to his character. Yeah. There's plenty of people from Project Innocence that could tell you going to court doesn't mean a thing because they get exonerated. I agree. I just want to know if there's an open case. Are, the, are there any open criminal cases pending? No. And you have no convictions? Do you have any con criminal convictions? I settled two cases. I don't think I'm convicted of nothing. I mean, I plea bargained. Okay, civil cases or criminal cases? Well, I think the one was criminal. I mean, it, it was considered grand larceny. Ms. Yurick, I am talking to Mr. Okay. Yurick. The grand larceny was a sign I did for a value over 10000 I think that's why it's called grand larceny. But if you want to hear this whole story, I'll tell you. But I, I want to I, know if you were convicted. No. no. I plea bargained. Any crimes. Okay, so what did you plead to? What was the ultimate... I plead to restitution, that if I paid them back, I would have no nothing on my record. Okay. But the charge was grand larceny. You yes. pled that, and you received um, a fine or restitution. Just restitution. And that was for a sign? Yes. Okay. And there are no other cases pending against mm -hmm. you? 
I have, or I have a no insurance ticket thanks to my soon to be ex wife that canceled my car insurance without me knowing. Okay. But no other civil or criminal cases pending against no. you? Right. And when was the, um, the grand larceny case settled? Too. It was just settled. I just signed a confession of judgment last week. Okay. There's actually three felony cases here. I found three felony cases on him. And again, Your Honor, she's referencing documents she's never provided. And I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, the reason I'm we asking explained. him if he was convicted of a felony and he's not being totally I wasn't. Coming. I haven't. Or if he um, had um, charges against him. I answered you, I have not. Ms. York, you can show him the document and ask if that refreshes his recollection, but I cannot admit the document into evidence. May I say it before she does, Your Yes. Honor? Well, this one is the one we just addressed. This is. These are different people, not me. Oh, here, John, you're. I don't know exactly how to read this. I don't know if this is all the same charge. The case numbers are right next to it on the left hand no, side. No, but there's no way of that that many case numbers. The case numbers are right on the left hand column. Yeah, I know. Again, but we have no idea if this know. is even authentic. It hasn't been produced. And the question is, does it refresh would, his memory? That's I correct. It was that using that for a refreshing of his recollection. Yes, this one so is the one we, we, we just addressed, the 2011. I think that the defendant, I mean, that the plaintiff would know when he was arrested for these. I wasn't crimes. arrested. You were not, are you saying you were not arrested? You were not Oh, this arrested grand arrested. larceny, okay, all right, yes. This was, this was all dismissed. Mr. York, are you saying you were not arrested for that? For this one I was, yes. Not the one I addressed the judge about. To be in the general manager of a sign company, this one back in 2011 was, we did some signs for Applebee's. Applebee's refused to pay us $60,000. I got upset. I tried everything for six months. We're about to go out of business. Applebee's would not pay us. They just would postpone it, do whatever. So I instructed my two installers to go start removing signs off an of Applebee's. Cops showed up, told them to stop. We stopped, but we repossessed our property because they didn't pay for it. Then, a month later, the IRS closes our doors. I was still going to the shop to get mail to try to still get some jobs done and keep some type of income coming in. When I went there the last time, I mean... Cops showed up everywhere with guns and told me to get on the ground. I got on the ground and I was arrested for grand larceny is, I guess, the charge then. 
and it was since dropped because it became a civil matter. They owed us money. We possessed our property. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really grand larceny. That was that issue. And I had to pay nothing, and it just was dismissed. Mm -hmm. The sign over 10,000 was around Christmas time. I was doing a monument sign on a wall for a home building project when you pull in. It does not need a new permit. I didn't feel I had to be a contractor to do that. I designed the sign beautifully, made the signs beautifully. The installers had some hiccups in it, and it took about a month and a half to get it installed. All the homeowners were upset because it was taking so long. Anyways, long story short, they found out. I didn't have a contractor's license, so they sued me or called the contractor's board, and then it became a crime because I put up a sign without a contractor's license that I since, without being able to afford an attorney, agreed just to pay him back and get a confession of judgment while there was no charge on my record. I just agreed okay. to take the cost-benefit and deal with it. Is it, um, is it true that various multiple uh, people have brought you to the court for business fraud? No. No? No. Business fraud? You're saying that you've never been brought to court under uh, business uh, business citations for uh, fraud that you've done and um, doing business without a license, so forth, not paying people, so forth, is that you're saying you haven't been to court on those premises? Objection, as the answer to the compound. Sustained. Phrase, uh, have you been to court on the premise of not paying other people in um, illegal business practices? No. Have you ever uh, been um, pulled over for driving over 90 miles an hour. Objection, relevance. The relevance I don't know. Is driving my children in his car. Sir, did you have the children in the car and get pulled over? I was in the car with him. Not that I can recall. I've gotten speeding tickets in my life, but I haven't gotten any recently. On our way, Your Honor, on our way to Colorado, at least one time we were all in the car and I woke up and we were going 90 and we got pulled over and got a ticket. Okay. Have you ever gotten a ticket for the kids having those seatbelts in the car? No. Have you ever gotten a DUI? Time frame. In your life, have you ever gotten yes. a DUI? 25 years ago. Have you ever been arrested for assault and battery? Objection is to arrest. His you know. character. <laughs> um, they're claiming I'm violent. They're claiming I do things. I don't. There's no evidence of this. They're just claiming. I actually have no. evidence that I'm not allowed to present to the court. An arrest is things. not relevant. I have evidence of his violent nature unlike his accusations of my violent nature that he has no evidence of because I have a clean criminal background check that I can provide the court I w that I wish I could. Actually, I have provided a court in other documents. Next question. Okay. So he's not to answer that. Arrests are not relevant. Convictions are relevant. Okay. Um, I'm confused because there were allegations about me being violent at a party with no arrest or evidence of any kind whatsoever, and that was allowed to be admitted. But I actually have evidence of him being violent, and I'm not allowed to question him on that. Am I being, am I understanding it appropriately? No. Okay. Can you explain it to me then? Because it's, no. I'm confused. I'm not going to take time and explain the rules of evidence to you. Okay, because I'm confused because there was no evidence supporting these false allegations against me, and I do have evidence against him for the same exact thing except for he actually did these things. Um, so I, I'm really, like, I don't know where to go from there except for I, I guess I'll just move on because I um, feel like it's... Um, very, very biased. I've never been arrested for assault battery. Uh, I've had a lot of allegations against my um, saying that I'm volatile and violent, and I've never been that way in my life. 
Um, okay, I'll, I'll move forward. Um, so I'll get away from the, all these convictions and arrests and I'll move on to something else. I didn't say convictions weren't admissible. I said arrests um, Mr. are not relevant. Okay. So for it. you to say I'm going to get away from these convictions okay. is a misstatement of what I just said. Okay. I understand. Mr. Urich, uh, and when you did your sign businesses during the course of your career as a sign person, did you ever do any signs for judges, like for campaigns and stuff like that? <laughs> Don't go there. What are you doing? It's a, it's no. a question. I mean, yes, of course, we did signs for judges all the time. So you know a lot of the judges that you've done signs for? No, I don't know a lot of judges. You just stated that, did you not, that you just did signs for a lot of judges in your sign career? Yeah, I don't Judge know. Judging is to relevance do I know? unless she wants well, Let's let her go him. there. I'm Mr. Just, Anderson, let's let her go there. I'm just asking him to confirm. Fair enough. Okay, do you, okay Judge Nancy Osterle, do you are you familiar with who she is? Yeah, I know her. Did she not get you off of your, you know her no. on a personal level, level do you not? No. Yeah, but, I know her. I don't know her that well. Yes, I know her on a personal level, but not well. Do you have her cell phone? No. Hmm. Was she the judge in uh, your felony conviction case? No. She's retired. I didn't show up on that one, and she was a sit-in judge. The regular judge was not there. So I'm sure she would have recruited herself, whatever the word is. If I had, I showed up. I actually forgot and didn't show up. In 2010, did Judge Nancy Osterley reside over one of your cases? Traffic tickets, perhaps, yes. But no, whatever you just said, I think you said felony. Have you, um, have you ever forged my name on any documents, ever? No. Have you ever forged my name on any tax documents? No. Ever? No. Have you ever forged my name on uh, the business license that you got for SWO? No. I had you sign everything, showed it to you, explained you what it was. That's, we both know that's a lie. Have you ever acted as me? to other companies as the Science no. West Outdoor. Why would I act as you? Have you ever acted as me to the state of Nevada government officials pretending to be me and answering their emails as me? No. baseball cards like collectibles yes mm -hmm. don't nothing of any value if I do I they're not of any value I don't think I do what does that mean you don't think you do, do you well I own a lot of football cards, cards that don't have any value but do baseball you, I'm not really into baseball what do you consider value uh, maybe it's worth more than 20 bucks <laughs> So you're saying you've never owned football and baseball Didn't cards? Didn't say that. You asked me if what I own any presently. No, I'm asking, have you ever owned baseball and football cards? Yes. What happened to them? Sold, like the coins. How many were there? You, so you're saying you don't own any anymore? No, yes. They don't have value, though, the ones I own. Oh, oh, so you're saying the ones you own are all less than $20? Yes, less than a buck, probably. So if I showed you a list that you have of um, a couple hundred baseball cards that you and your brother are selling on eBay, you, you, what would you say about that? I sold all those to support our family. So and my now brother. all of a sudden baseball cards, baseball and football cards exist that didn't a moment ago? I didn't. You asked me if I owned any today. I said nothing of any value. I never said I didn't own any ever. Well, how many of these cards that did you sell that you so used to own that you no you approximately no thirty own anymore? Approximately thirty, give or take. Where's the proof of this? That this that, well, you can pull, pull up eBay records from 2010 and 11. I wish I could, but discovery was closed, so I can't do that. If it's closed before you knew I was pro se.
It's all been liquidated to support our family. When was it liquidated, and um, by what company, and what time period? My brother Michael was a, a very good at selling stuff on eBay at the time, so he agreed to sell them for us in 2010, 2011. So you're saying that the assets of your card collection was commingled with your brother? I didn't say that. I said he sold them for us because he's good at selling on eBay. So it wasn't you and your brother that had these combined com commingled no. assets? No. Then he proceeds as were given to me. I put it in your checking account, and we paid our bills. Oh, you put it in my checking account. Which one was that? Which Whatever checking? account we had in 2010 and 2011. You put, you put baseball card money into my checking account from 2011? Yeah, in 2010. Whatever account you had that we paid the bills from. Well, I actually have that account with me, and uh, I don't see any baseball card. Uh, well, it's not going to say again. It's she keeps be a referencing deposit. documents not produced. That's correct, Mr. Eric. You can't refer reference evidence that you didn't provide to the court as a proposed exhibit. You don't have any exhibits in evidence. So ask the question, and he'll answer you know, the um, question. If I put an exhibit into a motion previous to today, does that count as exhibits? It's not in evidence. Because no. I, I thought that all those things that I had previously put in, I thought that they were in evidence. I was under that conception. No, it's an offer of proof. It's not evidence. Because I, I, I filed all of these things. Uh, so I was just very, that I, I was confused of the process, I guess, okay? What is ITEX? It's a barter network, kind of like a separate economy where cash is not used except to pay cash fees when you spend or accept money. So it's trade. In what capacity was iTech used? What business? Well, I had it before you set up Signs West Outdoor, but we mainly use it for sign sales. Really? What year did you set iTech up in? Uh, I would guess 2008 or nine, rough. Well, if I told you that uh, you set it up under Signs West Outdoor, would you refuse that? I don't know. I if can't If I told recall. you that year you set it up in Science West Outdoor, would you refute it? If, it, yeah, if I told you you I, set it up after 2010 under Science West Outdoor, I, would yeah. you say that? I would say I don't know for sure. Okay, I don't well, know. It was set up then. Well, and, uh, you say so. I'm going to object to the testimony through okay. examination. Um, Sustained. You sorry, can't testify. You're me. asking questions. I don't know. It's sorry, just um, ITAX. What's the big deal? Okay, so... You're saying that Science West Outdoor was in my name, correct? Yes, LLC. And, uh, the IMS Buttery Network is under Science West Outdoor, correct? I'm sorry, Science West Inc. is in your name. Science West LLC is indirectly in my folks' name. But what's your question? <laughs> I have an exhibit showing my business entity license. My question is, are you refuting Science West that ITEX the ITEX is under the business Science West Outdoor, which is in my name? Yes, yeah, Science West Outdoor transactions were used to fund that ITEX barter account. It's about at zero, anyways, so which it's is, mute. Which was in my name, was it not? No, it's not in your name. It's in my name. Was Science West Outdoor in my name? Yes, that was the Inc. ITEX is. account under Science West Outdoor. No, it was in my name. Was it in your name under what company? I don't know. It might have just said Signs West. It might have said Signs West Outdoor. I can't recall. It was Signs West Outdoor. Would you repeat Well, here we have an exhibit. That? You have an exhibit. You, you can that refer to it. that it was under Signs West Outdoor, and um, you're still doing business. In well, yeah. I mean, maybe. Trade, that you're still using trade with it. Signs West Outdoor is another company. Yes, I know. Okay. It's in my Are name. Are you paying your lawyer through iTech? Yes. Do you think that that would be um, a conflict of interest? No, why would it be? But do you think that doing it, paying your lawyer with funds through our community asset, you don't think that is a conflict of interest? No, with who? With me, it's my, my You were offered 5000 in iTax, you didn't use it. You spent it on your body. Is it not true that you have ultimate control over the iTax account? No. 
You so spent I, money on it? That you wrote an email to David Heller telling him that not to let your wife uh, have any access to the ITEPS account. No. He actually he offered to split it with you. He actually offered to split it with you. You never wrote an email to David Heller ask, telling him not to have me have anything to do with the ITEPS account? Objection as to Nancy. I don't think have so. Have you ever written it? Have you ever written an email to David Heller, the representative from ITEX, telling him to have your wife have no access? Objection asked and answered for the third time. Sustained. He hasn't actually answered that question. He did, but you were talking. And he said no. What's IMS? That's another barter network. Why isn't that listed on your financial disclosure? Because it's basically closed. I owe it cash fees, and there's a zero balance. Don't really use it much anymore. What if I told you that I have multiple emails saying that there's a huge balance on there? And I would be shocked because I know there isn't. Emails proving. So when was it supposedly closed? It's been in the negative for probably two, three months. Is it that business that you're signed with? Is that? I don't know. I think it's in my name. I don't know. It's out of. We don't use it. Your Honor, so the, it's, it's, it's mute to me. To, when he's not sure of things, can I show evidence to reflect his memory then? <coughs> Refresh his memory? Is that what you said? Refresh his memory? You do this in an orderly fashion, ma'am. But you're all over the place. What do you mean? I'm going one thing at a time chronologically. Well, you're talking over him, and you're asking another question before he answers the first question. He, you didn't even hear him answer no because you were talking over him. And you asked the correct question three times, and I heard him say no. So if you will slow down and go in an orderly fashion and ask him a question, if you have a document that refreshes his recollection, I will say whether or not you can show it to him. And again, nothing is offered into evidence just because it refreshes his recollection. Okay. So go in an orderly fashion, please. Is it true that you left IMS Bottery Network off of your financial disclosure form? Yeah, it's a zero asset. Didn't see the need to list it. Is it true that that Bottery Network is also under the business name Science West Outdoor? I don't know what name it's under. To <coughs> tell you the truth. I don't know. Is it, I'm trying to see if I did list it. Maybe I did. I'm sorry. I thought you were done. I, I'm trying to see if I did list it here. But it's mute. It has no value. It's zero. It's negative, actually. I, I owe them money. Did, uh, I can't show um, do you remember filling out your financial disclosure form and putting that you left Science West <coughs> and Shore Inc. on 1-31-16 due to the company going out of business? Yeah, you closed the checking account. Okay. Um, so it went out of business. Like you're you have not, according to this, you're saying you have not worked for Science West Outdoor after 131.16. Well, Is that true? Give or take. I don't know the exact date, you but roughly that time frame. Yes. <coughs> yes, 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 like yes. You? Yes. you must have closed the account. Oh. Would you like me to show you your name? You signed your name saying that you no, were that, terminated. No, that's fine. Actually, if, you you say, if you say I put that on there, then it's true. You put date of termination 131.16, and you put the reason was that the company went out of business yeah, you and that um, you were employed yes. by the company, not that you were yes. an owner. So would you describe yourself as an owner or an employee of that business? An employee. An employee? Okay, so um, other sign companies and other people know you as an employee or the owner? Objection calls for speculation. Sustained. They know me as a manager. So, are you saying that I was the owner of Signfest Outdoor Inc.? Yes. Did I ever get a paycheck from Signfest Outdoor? Oh, sure. Really? What? How much did I make? Well, all the money went into your personal checking account. I'm uh, I'm really confused. How much money did I make off of my Signfest Outdoor Inc. that I had no access to the financial accounts of? You were the signer on the checking account that the money went into from the business um, to pay our bills. I have. I've never had access to those accounts, which you know, so I'm asking you now, how much money did I make? Roughly did five to eight thousand dollars a month. Did I get a paycheck, I'm asking you? No, you, you, you did not. Did you get a not. paycheck? 
No, I would have got a 1099. Um, well, you're claiming that you made a paycheck on your FDF as the manager of that company. No, Signs West Las Vegas. Did you like me to show you? Were you claim that you're making a paycheck as the manager of that company? I don't think I used the term paycheck. What term did you use? I don't know. Income. So you're reporting income from that company. But whatever the form me. stated. So me as the owner made no income, but you as the yes. manager made income. It's community property. Correct? You made what I made. I made what you made. It was your checking account that paid the bills. You okay, paid the because bills. I don't see anything in there. I don't see a single check written to me or any funds. No, because we transferred it online. We didn't write checks. Oh, we transferred okay. it online. So how many bank accounts do you have? Zero. You have zero bank accounts? Yes. What if I told you I found 24 different bank account numbers in that Signs West email? Different. What if I told you I looked up every account you have, looked at your purchases, wrote down your bank account numbers, and listed them? Objection. Assumes facts, not evidence. Would you that, that you have 24 yes. bank account numbers? Yes. That would be Fantasy Island, because I don't. You know that. I've had nothing in my name. Sir, there's no question pending. Sorry. any bank accounts associated with big printing your brother's business oh. that, okay so you have you're not affiliated with your brother's business in any way you wouldn't you you want to for instance have an email for his company I believe he testified that he okay. ran a couple of credit yeah, so card payments through his brother's okay. business so uh, that mischaracterizes his testimony do you own the email John at big printing Las Vegas yes so, Don't use it anymore, though. But does that not prove you're affiliated somehow with that company? Why would you have an email with that company's name on it? That was uh, four to five years ago when Mark was busy, and I said I would take his sales for him, and for a short period of time, approximately two to three months, I handled maybe five sales for him, and I used that email, so... Um, I was a representative of his company, if you will. If I told you I had some emails just from last month of you um, getting signed businesses from Big Print, let's say it gets under that email, would you review that? Objection. I Again, it's that. Yeah. Your attorney objects, stop talking. When his attorney objects, stop asking the question. Okay. Objection. It seems facts, not in evidence. Uh, Sustained. But can I rephrase? As long as you stop referring to documents that you have not given to me as proposed exhibits and evidence in this case. In the last month, have you done any business for Big Print, Big Print Las Vegas, Big Print Las Vegas? No. Do you have any access to the bank account associated with Big Printing Las Vegas? Zero. If I told you that the bank account number ended in 0414 and it was with Bank of America, would you, if, what, the, how would I know the bank account number is 5010124004414? Objection calls for speculation. I'm House. glad to answer it. Stop. Okay. When your attorney objects, stop. <laughs> Is there any way that you would have that account number for Big Printing Las Vegas? Yes. Okay, why would why would you have that? To make a deposit for my brother at Bank of America. Paying him back a loan. 
because I needed money at the time. How many transactions has your brother made on credit cards for you? I said earlier, two or three, I believe. Not many. He was uncomfortable with it. So I take credit cards now. There's a bank account with Wells Fargo. Um, it ends in 0742. It's on, I found it on a piece of paper of your notes. It has your name on it. Do you still own that bank account? Objection. Again, we're referencing records she hasn't produced. I'm okay. Just asking him if he owns that bank account, not asking him about a record. Yes, Ms. Urich, you did. You just referred again to another document. I, I, you can insinuate all you want to that you have all this evidence and that you have all these records, and your insinuations are not persuasive, nor are they proper. So, once again, $500 sanction for being in direct contempt for mentioning a document I, that is not before me in evidence. So, Stop making references that you have mountains of evidence because it is not persuasive. You could be lying to me. I have no idea because I don't have these proposed exhibits. So, move on. With respect, Your Honor? No. Can I? Move on. Next okay. question. I, 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 Next I was, question. $1,500 in sanctions. You will stop eventually referring to this mountain of evidence that you have that you have not presented to me. So, at, no, stop. Okay. Stop. Ask Can the I next ask you question. question. Like that, uh, moving forward. I told you to move forward. Okay. I would love it if you would move I, forward. I just want to make sure that I do things the way you want. Uh, how would I form a question of th that um, for financial things without uh, without inferring without referring to a document? How would I form the question to ask him about financial things that he hasn't disclosed? How would I do that the way you want? Don't refer to the document. I was trying to like ask him about bank accounts he has that he hasn't disclosed, but I tried not to refer to the document. I just wondering how would I ask him that without referring to the document so that. Well, I'll tell you what. Don't ask any more questions about that because he said he didn't have any bank accounts. So go to a new subject. Mm -hmm. And stop pouting. Why wasn't Jordan's Coogan account a part of your FDF? It's not my asset, that's Jordan's. Your FDF is supposed to show all family assets, assets including mine. You have access to that account. Why wasn't I that don't have access to that account. You do. Did you not make a new Coogan account no, for Jordan? No, did not. Still use the one you set up. Did you use the Coogan account for past jobs? And th therefore no, never touched it. I can't. You're the trustee. There's no... Sir, there's no question pending. All right, you question answered time. the question. Are you hiding any assets? No. Are you hiding any bank accounts? No. I wish. Are you not disclosing all your avenues of income? No, I'm not. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I was a false negative. No, I'm not dis not hiding anything. So you're asserting that you have disclosed all your avenues of income, correct? Yes. Okay. In your FDF, did you attach any invoices at all to show like uh, how much you're making or quit? Uh, Sorry, let me rephrase. In your FDF, did you attach any QuickBook accounting? No. Actually, I have a, let's go backward a little bit. In, you own a business, correct? No, we, I don't we own. We, we own businesses, correct? No, I never owned anything. Okay. Did I own a business? Yes. Okay, so does that require... Actually, I didn't even know I owned a business until... Yeah, hey, you did.
Are you aware that you were supposed to fill out a detailed FDF, not a general FDF? Objection assumes facts. No. It's uh, calls for legal conclusion. He's not a business owner, so I don't. Sustained. In the NRCP 16.2, it says if you or your spouse owns a business, you are to file a detailed FDF. Does it not? Objection. He's not a lawyer. He just I. Your Honor, and um, and our, he's a, he has a lawyer sitting right there representing himself. Um, so as a lawyer should know that NRCP 16.2 dictates, mandates actually, that if you or spouse own a business, you're required to fill out a detailed FDF. And I'm asking him why he hasn't done that. At which point in time? He has never done that. After the business was closed? He has not done that at all, period. You didn't answer my question. Okay. Um, yes. Um, after, after the business, when the business, when he filed for divorce, the business was open. Uh, the business has actually not been closed. The business is still operating under his. Um, that's why he wants that email back so bad because he's using it as one of his ways, one of his many ways to make money. I don't so, know anything about an email, so that's $2,000 because, you, again, you're you referencing something I that I don't I know anything about. Email. What are you and you're interrupting me, so that's 2500 Now, you also did not file a detailed financial disclosure form. So if I were you, I would move on and ask him a different question. Your Honor, I just recently found out, I just recently read all the, the rules and wrote it all out. And in my motion, actually in my um, oral motion that I filed with the court, I did include that. I did include all, I answered every single question on You that. understand that your motion is not pending before this court, that today is the day set for trial, and I gave you two continuances to get ready for trial. And for whatever reason, you decided to file a motion that would not be heard prior to the time of trial, that has no relevance to the trial, nor did you ask me for an order shortening time to hear your motion prior to the trial. So your continual reference to a motion that is not properly before the court is irrelevant and it's improper. May I inquire, Your Honor, just uh, so I don't forget later, is that, that motion date vacated given that we're in trial now? Yes. Your Honor, with respect, um, I remember vaguely reading some case law that said that when a pro se litigant is obviously trying to make, um, a, make a request for something and she's not doing it the correct way, that the court is to tell her the procedure of that way. I just Are did. you familiar with that? Uh, well, um, for quite a long time, for months now, I've been filing motions with this court trying to um, trying to admit evidence and exhibits, and um, and I haven't been told another. I haven't been told the correct way to do that. The self help center downstairs is always available to pro se litigants. If you file a motion that you neglect to serve, it never makes it on my calendar, and I never know that you filed the motion. The only reason that I know you filed the motion of July 12th, just a few days before your trial, is because it made it to my calendar. If you've been continually filing things and not getting uh, scheduling on my calendar or not serving them, I have no idea about that. Um. When I went and I'm not your lawyer, and I'm not here to give you legal advice. That is just a matter of procedure that I am advising you of. Okay. Um, when I went downstairs to file it, they said that they filed it in, um, electronically and served it. Do you have proof of service? Did you request an order shortening time? Yes, I did request an order shortening time. And it was never given to me. I have it right here. Do you want, can I show it to you? No, because you're asking him questions. It's not the time to do this. Okay. What, when, is it, is, I have it, I could show you the, the order shortening time and the date. This is very hard. I had to research a lot. I had to figure all this out on my own while working and while trying to pay for everything. 
Um, okay. Trying to think of where I left off. Are hiding any assets? Sure, there's you. no question pending. the businesses that you've owned throughout your signed career were all family businesses. Would you, would you refute that? No. Okay. They were all owned by family members. So, in other words, every business that you've owned, every member of your family has been a part of it, has it, have, have, have they not? Again, I've never owned any business other than Clearwater. My parents owned most of every business through their trust, through the limited partnership. So you're telling me that you're not listed as an owner for Science West Inc? Correct. You're telling me you're not listed as an owner for Desert Movers? Correct. You're telling me you're not listed as an owner for Mountain Greyhound? Correct. You're telling me you're not listed as an owner for Clearwater Management? No, that one I believe I am, but I'm not positive, but I think I am. All those businesses are out, of, are closed, defunct. Revolt. Are you listed as an owner for Uric Industries? No. Are you listed as an officer for Uric Industries? Possibly. Did Uric, is Uric Industries the name of the title on the deed of your parents' house? No, Uric Family Trust, I believe, is. Are you an officer or a member or affiliated with Uric Family Trust? I might be a beneficiary, but I'm not a trustee. I don't want to refer to a document, so I wanted to ask you your advice. The um, FDF, he didn't fill out a detailed FDF. Um, is, isn't that, the, it, according to the NRCP, it, it mandates that we're supposed to fill those out. How can we have a, a divorce trial without the, that kind of financial documents being, being admitted into evidence? Don't, shouldn't, doesn't the law require that kind of evidence to be admitted? The testimony that I have heard is that he works for his parents' company and any companies that he may have worked for or that you may have owned, which would have required you to file a detailed financial disclosure form, are defunct, so no. Um, if they're defunct and they're not operating, they're not doing business, they have no assets, they have no income, then no, he doesn't need to list them. Okay, um, Your Honor, um, as I filed in every motion so far, I made the court aware that I have no control at all over this business I supposedly owned and Mr. Urich is in total control of all financial documents and I not only don't have access but have been completely blocked from them so I am not able to put that in my FDF. He is the owner and um, the uh, on our QuickBooks accounts. He's the listed as the owner and the sole Person to reference to QuickBook accounts no, that have not been produced. That's another $500 that, for you, Ms. Yurik, I'm so not, I'm stop. I'm not referring to a document. I'm referring to an account associated You're with You're referring business. to your QuickBooks account, and he's listed on that. And again, that's not before me, so. Your Honor, with Stop. Oh, my God. Stop. Okay, stop. Stop arguing during the time you're supposed to be asking him questions. Are we up to 3,000? No, she's up to 3,000 now. Three contempt. Okay, how much is this one here? Is They're all 500. all 500. I didn't refer to a document that time. I have no QuickBooks account as a proposed exhibit. Okay, I will refer to a document. Can I ask if he's 
the owner of the QuickBooks account? Can I QuickBooks ask? is a software program. It I have QuickBooks. All of our I don't own a business. You don't have to own a business to have a QuickBooks. It's a software program that you use to keep track of your money. It lists all of our financials for the company. No. Move on with your questions or I'm going to terminate your questioning because you're arguing and you're arguing your case and you're arguing with me. You either ask him a question or you're done. With respect, Your Honor, aren't I supposed to argue my case? Not now. You're asking him questions. Okay. He's the only one that can answer these questions. I'm really... Well, don't argue with him and don't argue with me. Ask him the question. You're stuck with his answer. Okay. I've explained to you at least six times that you have an opportunity to put on your case in chief. This is your opportunity to cross-examine him. Have you ever transferred money you for interrupting me and the rest are for referring to a document? I've transferred money from our business to your personal account to pay the personal bills. At the same bank, Wells Fargo. How many bank accounts have we had at one time? Well, as far as I can recall, you had a personal checking and we had a business checking. I don't recall any additional accounts. When I discipline the kids, what form of discipline do I mainly use? Yelling. So, are you saying that I don't have the kids write sentences about what they did wrong and... Yeah. You do that too, but mostly yelling. So... talking about how I homeschool Jordan, right? So, um, am I qualified to homeschool to Jordan? I don't believe so. Have I been a tutor? You've known me to be a tutor for other people throughout our marriage and my life. You worked as a tutor for a couple months, once a week, while we were married. You told me you were a tutor. I don't know if that's true. Um, the way you treat Jordan is not a conducive environment to teach anyone anything. They're terrified. Do you own any stocks or bonds? No. Do you have plans on opening a modeling industry business? Not anymore. I did five, six years ago. Has any of the businesses been evaluated properly? Jackson Bag. Evaluated? Sustained. What? Big? Big. It's so irrelevant that there are no businesses to evaluate. 
um, Science West Outdoor is an active business still getting jobs in. Has that been evaluated? You closed it. It's out of business. Yeah, it's not a... <laughs> I um, listed the children as witnesses for this for this trial. Why aren't the children here to um, be able to say what what they want and be able to uh, be able to? Uh, You're asking me? Uh, no, <laughs> no. I'll answer that question. Your children are not to be put in the middle of your divorce trial, and they were already interviewed by a professional, and you have not asked for permission, nor would I grant it in this case, for your children to testify. They are minor children. They're not permitted to be brought to the courthouse, and if you've researched the rules as you said you have, then you know that you have to ask for my permission for them to be in here to testify, and I have not granted such permission. No arguing. Move on to your next question. Do you have any proof that I've stolen anything from you ever? Yes. What is the proof? I've got a video of you admitting that you stole it. My full-length coat. Why isn't that I submitted? witnessed you load the arcade game into the back of a moving truck with some other guy. Is it not true that you and I decided to divorce amicably and that we would discuss the details after my surgery? No. I don't know what you mean by amicably. Is but. it not true that we went to have a luncheon to discuss the details of our amicable divorce, but you had already actually filed on that day at Kobe so um, Let me refresh your memory. It was at Kobe Sushi, Kobe Sushi Bar. Uh -oh. I was trying to serve you with divorce papers at Kobe's. Why didn't you serve me then? Because I can't. I'm, I'm a related party. It has to be an independent, and nobody at Kobe would do it for so me. So you're saying that we had that luncheon... So we had that luncheon under the guise that we were going to talk about our amicable divorce, but really you wanted to serve me papers. Is that what you're saying? Correct. So in other words, you blindsided me with divorce papers, correct? You wanted a divorce. I was just starting the process. I needed to serve you. <laughs> in 2011, did I ask you for a divorce? In April of yeah, 2011. I guess. I don't really know. God, geez. Yes, I guess. In April of 2011, did you not sign a marital contract with me? Because you. Um, I don't asking, think so. And we're getting into documents uh, that have not been produced. I'm just asking him if you signed a marital contract with me. Right. Do I have that document? I can't ask him if you signed a marital document with a contract. What is the relevance of this? The relevance is we have a we have a contract between each other because he asked me to stay and give him another chance in the marriage in 2011. Oh. And what does this relevant. what does this alleged contract purport to say? It says a lot of things in it. It says that. And why are you bringing it up? Because I I want I want to acknowledge that the reason why. Um, we, I stayed in the marriage was because I was giving him uh, him the, another chance because of all the things that so he the marital was contract you're supposed to tell me what's in it and you said a lot of things are they personal in nature? No, they're, they're not, not personal, personal in nature. That that no, they're not personal in nature. I guess. I so what is the nature of this agreement? The nature is if I gave him another chance in the marriage that. He would give me all of the house belongings, make sure that he took care of me for a certain amount of months and years, and um, help me get set up with a new, with, with, with like a new car and a new home. If, and have you produced yes. this document <laughs> to opposing counsel? Yes, I, I've submitted this document several times. Actually, I think I submitted it in almost every motion I put into the court so far. Which isn't evidence. Did you receive this oh, document, that? Mr. Anderson? If I did, I certainly don't recall it. This was the first I've heard of it. The, the motions that she filed are very difficult to read. They're just kind of run-ons, and you know, there, there could be things in there that I don't recall, but this is the first I've heard of any 
marital contract. It's never been raised by your former counsel either, so I don't know anything about a marital contract. All right, Mr. York, do you have a gambling hobby? Sure, I gamble. How often do you gamble? Not very. Usually just during football season. How many casinos do you have an account with for gambling? At this point, I have to object. I don't believe there's been a waste claim pled. I think it's a fishing expedition right now. We're just doing discovery while he's on the stand, I'm and you're going way beyond the scope because you acknowledged when you started your cross-examination that you were limited to the scope of direct examination, and that is correct, and I told you, good job, that is correct, and you've gone way beyond the scope of direct examination, so you are not permitted any more leeway in this fashion. You're not taking his deposition and fishing while he's on the stand. You are to cross-examine him on the items that his counsel asked about. Your Honor, I'm trying to build my case and um, note his character. You understand what I just said? No, I, I, I'm not, I don't understand it's what you just said. It's beyond the scope. Beyond the scope. Um, Next question. Is him gambling isn't anything, doesn't that affect how he would parent our children and, and, and how he would allocate my daughter's resources with her funds? Next question. Isn't it true that our marriage suffered a lot of problems due to your addiction to pain pills? No, it's not true. Is it not true that your addiction to pain pills affected our sex life? Yeah. So, wouldn't you say that that affected our marriage somehow? No. Is it true that you went to new mail because of that problem? Objection, relevance. And it's beyond the scope. Sustained. Would you say you have an addiction to pain pills? I have a prescription for them. I don't I, know if I'm addicted to them, but I need them. Would you say you have an addiction? No. How many pain pills do you take a day? Three to four. Do you ever, do you, do you watch any porn at all? Objection. It's not relevant. relevant. It was a problem in our marriage, and it's also it's not relevant. I'm also it's concerned. not relevant. I'm just really confused because a lot of things have been thrown at my character that were not only not relevant but alleged and with no proof and. These things that I'm asking about his character are extremely relevant to our marriage, why we're divorcing our children, and I, I Your know sex I life is not relevant to his parenting skills. You being volatile and yelling at your kids, slapping your daughter, pushing people, more than one person, that is all relevant and that is testimony that I have heard. I haven't now, done any of those things, so... That's fine. You can testify that you didn't do them and everybody's a liar. You can do that. You can testify to that. But I find no relevance to his sex life. Nor do I find any relevance to your sex life. Ask your next uh, question. Your Honor, my sex life was brought up. I don't find it relevant. But when my sex life was brought up, you didn't say that. I'm saying it now. I don't find it relevant. If you're introducing your children to somebody on the spur of the moment and you don't really know this person, I find that to be poor judgment in parenting, but I don't care who you sleep with. You're incompatible in marriage. You're here to get a divorce. So ask the next question. You were talking about me using drugs throughout our marriage, right? Sure. You said that the years could have been 2008. Do you remember saying that? Sure, yes. In 2008, wasn't that the year Luke was born? 
No, Luke was born in 2004. Right. In 2008, Johnny was one. Seven. Johnny, seven. Where did I get these drugs from that... You're alleging that I used? You had a few friends that would get it for you, as far as I know. When I was married to you, I only had a two friends throughout the whole marriage. You You're not testifying. Okay. You're asking him questions. How you asked him okay. if he knew, and he okay. said you had some friends that you could have gotten them from. He doesn't know that would for certain. Would you say I had a lot of friends while we were married? No. Would you say you... You would know all who my friends were. No, I wouldn't say that. I have no idea what you were doing well, now that I look back. While we were married, you didn't know who all my friends were? That's what no. you're saying? I have no idea. While we were married, did you not know where I was at all times? No, I did not. While we were married, did you not GPS me? Yeah, Tim, we're getting beyond the scope. Sustained. Is this trial only about things that I've done wrong? And it, allegedly? You need to keep asking him questions on cross-examination. Because I'm asking questions that point to his character, and um, I'm not allowed to get answers, for, but when my character was looked at, it wasn't the same response. I've already explained to you. If it's relevant to parenting skills, okay. I will listen to it. But if you're just going on a fishing expedition and, uh, and throwing ahead. anything that you can out there, it isn't relevant. You're it has to be relevant to one of the factors that determine best interests of the children. And if it's tied to one of those relevant factors that determines best interests of the children, then you can ask it. If it does not, move on. Your Honor, I'm sorry. I was not trying to go on a fishing expedition at all. Well, you are. Very direct questions that are um, specific. That has nothing to do with his parenting and yes. has nothing to do to the division of assets and liabilities. So move on and ask another question. You said that I was living or dating a man named David Cooper, correct? Yes. And why would you bring that up when I have just said, said I don't really I care about his testimony? He I don't care about this. your dating. I just care about you introducing he children to your insignificant others that you don't put a label on. That's all I care about. Well, I don't care who you date. So don't ask him about who you're dating. Mr. I don't care. Mr. Urich implied that I brought my daughter around a swingers named David Cooper. And so why I, don't you ask him about that's that? That's what I am asking him about, Your Honor. And ask that question. Your Honor, that's the question I just asked him. No, you asked him about you dating somebody. No, I didn't, Your Honor, with respect. That is just what you said. Your Honor, what I said. You said nothing about your daughter. I was refreshing. So ask the question about your daughter. I was refreshing his memory about. He doesn't David need to Cooper. refresh his memory. Ask him about having your daughter around somebody that you're just insignificantly dating or not dating. But it's about your daughter. It's about your children. It's not about who you're dating. Mr. Yurik, did you say I brought my daughter around a man named David Cooper who was a swinger? Yes, you did. Mr. Yurt, why would you think I did something like that? Because you told me you did. Because Jordan told me she was over there because it was on Facebook. You were going to live there. So you're saying that I told you that I was bringing Jordan around a swinger. Yes. You didn't say swinger. You said you're going over to the Coopers. You had a parking sticker on your car for Lake Las Vegas from, for being able to get in the gate. And how do you know the Coopers are swingers? Because I met them. Because they wanted her and I to party with them in that way. In a sexual because, way? Yes. Polyamorous? I'm sorry? Multiple yes. people. And then okay. I researched them online, and he came from out of state. He got kicked out of that state for trying to open up a swingers club. He came to Vegas and has tried to open up a swingers club, which he effectively did. I think they shut it down, and then he's trying to open another one, and I haven't followed him in the last two years. All right, Mr. I was concerned where my daughter was spending her time and nights because she told me it's none of my business where my daughter's at. 
Okay. Mr. Urich, when it did that uh, when did that happen? January 2016. No, on what day did it happen that Mr. Cooper allegedly wanted to have it if a polyamorous affair? You told me they're swingers and they want us to join them and we should do that. Oh, I did. When, when, yes. when did that happen? On Prairie Dove, upstairs in the master bedroom, two times. But, like when, when, okay, when, at what period of time did this happen at? I would say third quarter 2015. What does that mean, third quarter? The third, look. In 2015? July, August, and September of 2015. <laughs> at Prairie Dove House. 2015? Yes. 16? 2015. Okay. Is when they wanted to engage in sex with you guys. Well, she was alone with them at a at the Riviera without me there, and she came home late that night. I couldn't reach her, but the next day or two, she told me about them, and she wanted to do that type of activity with them. But they weren't very attractive to me. I'm open to anything, but that wasn't the people that I would want to hang out with. <laughs> Next question. Are you saying, are you searching that I left on Christmas Day of 2015? Yes, you did. I'm not a, yes. So, like, how did that happen? The kids you, open presents and I just leave? How, Christmas how did, evening. How that go, what are the details of that event? Christmas evening, approximately 5, 6 p.m. We were playing a board game. You did not like Mikey's girlfriend. You were pretty drunk. You could have been on drugs for all I know. You were at that stage I could sense you were about to blow up. I tried to get you to calm down. You started yelling at me. I went outside to cool off. And the next thing I know, you and her are yelling at each other. And you want them to leave your house. You berated me that I didn't stand up for you. It went outside. I think you left for like a minute or two and then came back. Luke was upstairs crying and locked himself in the bedroom because he witnessed all this. I told you that. You didn't care. Your friend Lisa was there trying to calm you down. Nobody could calm you down and you eventually left for three days and no one could reach you. I assume you went to David Cooper's, but I could be wrong. I left for three days. Yep. You came back to get the tickets. Out? You came back to get tickets to Motley Crue that I was surprising you with on your birthday. So, Today's December 27th. Did I come back and move back in? No. You came back oh, and took the tickets and went to the concert oh. with someone else, one so, of your girlfriends. Uh, I never lived at the house again after that day. Yes, Thank you me. did. You stayed till maybe... You're saying I left Christmas Day and abandoned the family. I've never been back. Is that correct? I didn't say never been back. I said okay. you abandoned the family. Well, abandoned the family means that I left that day and didn't come back and abandoned the family. You did. Christmas evening. Well, if three I, days. If I supposedly came back, that's not abandoning the family, is it? Is it? Yeah. I didn't okay. say... You didn't come but, back. So are you telling the court that I actually didn't leave the house then? No, you left the house Christmas evening for three days. No one could reach you. You then came back and went to the concert with your girlfriend. Then you came back and we tried to reconcile, which was stupid, but we were trying for a week and a half to two weeks because we took Jordan to L.A. to try to get her, to try to figure out whether to move there, get her in a dance school, and then we met with a dance school that we really wanted to put her in. But then you kept just going out, disappearing, and eventually took Jordan and just went to LA about mid to late January, and then that was it. Have you ever abandoned the family? No. You never moved all your stuff out uh, of the office and your wardrobe and um, completely left and went to your brother's house? Yeah. I thought you just said no. That's not abandoning the family. That's sleeping at my brother's and working there. Did you? Uh, well, when I abandoned the family on Christmas Day, did I take all my things with me? 
No, but you disappeared. No one could reach you, and the kids were terrified. Oh, okay. Okay. So when you took all of your things with you, your whole wardrobe, all your clothes, and all your office equipment, and all the computers, and all the documents, and everything, and left, and said that you're moving to Morris, that doesn't count as abandoning the family. Objection, Ms. States. This testimony seems facts not evidence. Okay, I'll rephrase. Somehow I abandoned the family over an argument. But when you actually moved your things out of the house, that's not moving out. I'm con no, you knew where I was. Anybody could reach me. I my cell phone was, was operating. Okay. I was at my brother's. Have you ever abused me in a relationship? No. Have you ever physically hurt me or touched me or pushed me or hit me? No. Defending blows, I might have put my hands up, but I've never hit you. Have you ever threatened my life before? No. Nope. Have you ever <laughs> no. made me think that you were going to kill me in the car? No. So you never wrote uh, your description of of what of, of the car incident, of one of the three car incidents. You never wrote down your description of what happened. You never did that. Objection! Again, we're getting into references to documents that That's haven't been a document. produced. Wrote down. Sounds like a document to me. Your objection is sustained. Have you ever been in the car with me and got out of the driver's seat while the car was still going and left me in the car? No. I have stopped the car and got out because you would not be quiet. And I just needed peace and quiet for five minutes. Did I ever try to get a job outside of the business during our marriage? Yes. What did you, what did you think of that when I tried to get jobs outside of the business? I thought you were leaving me, and this was a guy that you thought had money that I knew didn't, that this guy was a snake, and you didn't care, and you wanted to go work for him anyways, and I was trying to protect you. But I, now looking back, I can see that was stupid of me, that you were trying to reel him in and leave me because you thought he had money when he's just a lying snake. So who is he? He is a fake producer. What's his name? I actually forgot. I'm sure you know, but... Are we I talking forgot. about when at Norman Mays? Yeah, Norman Mays. The yep. producer of Jordan's yep. first yep. TV show. Everybody warned offered, you about him? Are we, when he offered me a job and you, you told me that you would divorce me if I took the job? I don't recall if I said memory? that. Does but that refresh your memory? That might have been when we were on the verge of divorce anyways. Okay, isn't that what the catalyst of everything was? No, the catalyst was you left. Did you not tell me that if I worked for Norman Mays that you would leave and divorce me? Objection. Again, we're getting beyond the scope. Okay. When I worked for Norman Mays, when I, the, when I worked for Norman Mays against your permission, the first day that I worked there, did you not, while the kids were home, completely clean all your stuff out of the house, all your clothes, and all the computer and office documents, did you not move all those things out while I was at work? I might have went, I don't remember exactly, I might have left and took my stuff and my computers and went to Mark's and I told the kids I'm going to stay at Mark's for a while. Uh, you, your mom and I are having some problems. Have? Did you do that or did you not do that? Yeah, I don't know if it was the day you went to work for Norman May or not, but I did do that. And did you not tell the kids that mommy, mommy liked someone else more and didn't want to have a family anymore and that she was hurting your feelings? I don't recall ever saying something like that. And then it leave them completely, did you not leave them completely alone by themselves after you moved out while I was at work? No. So who were the kids with when you moved they out? They were in school. No. They yes, were, I picked up they? Luke from school at 3 and Johnny. Well, while I was at work and you had completely moved all your things out and you told the kids it was because mommy liked someone else more, it, did, did you not leave them alone? Crying after Again, that. I don't remember. I picked them up from school. I didn't move all my oh. things out. I took some clothes and my comp and my work stuff. And I left you in the house with the kids so I could get away and stay with my brother. Have you ever pushed me while I was pregnant? No. God, no. Really? Has, <laughs> have you ever... 
when it, your mother and I had conflict multiple times over her controlling nature in our marriage, have you ever sided with me? Objection beyond the scope. Sustained. Do you think that your mother um, had an impact on our marriage? Objection beyond the scope. I'll allow it since she testified. But again. A positive impact, sure. Do you think she that helped you quite a bit. Do you think your mother overstepped her bounds at any point in time with no. concerning how I'm raising the children? I don't think so. ever tell Jordan that she doesn't have a career, that she's just living through her mother's dreams? Mm. Fiction relevance. Is yeah. so. son not relevant? Tell me why you're asking the question. I'm asking that because I want it on record the way he talks to his daughter. Sir, have you ever said that to your daughter? Not in those words. I told my daughter that her career is because of her hard work, not her mom's, because she kept telling me, on my whole career is because of mommy, and I go, Jordan, your career is not because of mom, it's because of your hard work, going to dance classes every day, going to acting classes, going on auditions, you're the one doing the work, not your mom. So I'm just confirming everything from before it doesn't count today, right? All like any exhibits does not count today, correct, right? I have no idea what you're talking about. I just went through that question for you. Okay. Uh, um, like oh, you need to ask your next ex question. Exhibits I've entered before today don't count. That's correct, right? As I said, the exhibits that you may have attached to any motions or oppositions are offers of proof. They are not in evidence. Okay. Um, have you ever told Jordan that the reason why mom isn't allowed to come over right now is because she manipulates men, uses drugs, and is a bad role model, and that she won't understand until she's older and you're trying to protect her from me? No, I don't think I said those kind of words. What do you think you said? I can't remember. I mean, I was dealing with a scared little girl a year ago, terrified of her dad. I don't know what I might have said to ease the pain and, and, and get her out of the state she was in. During our supposed separation, did I not have Jordan stay with you for spring break and a few weeks in the summer when she, against her wishes? No, I don't did think Jordan so. Did Jordan stay with you during spring break of, of, of this of that, of No, you were living with Lope, the Lopez attorney. Okay. First of all, that was a roommate situation. I was renting a room. Uh, I need to clear that up because it keeps being referred to at some point. I'm just telling you where Jordan was. Um, not implying anything. So are you saying that Jordan did not spend Easter at break with you of 2015? Objection asked and answered. I don't know. If it, I, don't know. I know she that. asked it, but I don't know if he answered it because it, this is so I do not think so. I can't remember. I know they spent the night Easter night. You came by... Did Jordan spend a few weeks with you for the summer due to my, um, due, due, due to me wanting that for her because I felt like I she can't remember. I don't recall her ever staying with me more than do, a few days. Do you recall me? That. Do you recall me wanting her to stay with you a while during the summer because I felt like your bond wasn't as strong as it used to be, and I did not like that, and that's why she stayed with you during the a few weeks in the summer. Do you recall that? No. Do you have any evidence of this lifestyle where I supposedly party all the time? Or, That's or, Facebook. Oh, you, where, you told me. You showed me a picture of my... Okay, stop. You either ask the question and stop talking, or you talk and talk and talk. And then you wait for her to finish talking, and you answer the question. Yes, but you can't talk at the same time. I've already told you that. So go ahead and ask your question, and then when you're done, stop talking and let him answer. I 
why haven't you put this proof into evidence as you have done other things if you have proof of me partying on Facebook? Well, we did submit um, your Lennon bond. I'm not sure what the purpose of that Facebook site is other than a collection of serial boyfriends or Johns, if you will. Um, what proof do you have that I party? Well, that I go out and party? What proof you do you have? You told me. I, Facebook I told you pages. This. I don't think, I don't know why it's relevant huh? to you what you do. <laughs> You're welcome to do whatever you want. Is it not true that you told me that you're divorcing me because of the way I dress and manipulate men? I mean, is that is that? Oh, you, you true? left is it, me. Is it not true uh, that you, hang on. Sorry. Let him answer the question. I didn't ask it right. I meant to say, is it not true the reason why you didn't want to be amicable with me when I was wondering why you changed your mind? That it meant, I'm trying to refresh your memory. Remember when I tried to have a meeting with you about why you changed your mind about being amicable? Do you remember what your answer was? No, I don't recall you ever trying to have a meeting with me. I tried to have meetings with you, but you either backed out or didn't show up. You don't recall telling me that you didn't want to be amicable solely because of how you thought I dressed and manipulated men? No, I never said that. Don't recall that. Have you ever told your daughter those things? I might have told her mommy doesn't dress appropriately when you're with her sometimes that women don't need to dress that way when they're around children. Have you ever had a sexual relationship with my friend Lisa? No. Sexual relevance. Um, my sexual relationship was on trial. The judge told you our sex lives is irrelevant. Answer questions. Isn't it not true that I did graphic designs for during our marriage and that I had a career as a graphic designer? That yeah. I wasn't just a homemaker. Sure, yes. Okay. So, it, would it not be true? Would, would, it, would you argue with the fact that after our separation, you cut me off from that um, ability to do that? No, that's not true. You closed the account, and I still offered to pay you for designs, but you wouldn't do them. You lost access to your email, and it was redirected to, to my email, and you wanted the password back. Is it not true that you used the kids against me as extortion to get that email password? You were ignoring my text. You sent me a yawn an emoji like, like this when I asked if you'd please return it, and you sent LOL. I was extremely upset because that was my source of income for me and the children. Could you please and I did that? ask, since you like to communicate through the kids and not with me directly, yes, I asked the kids to ask you to return our email so that I can get sales leads. That's how I got leads. So you're affirming that you got sales leads from Science West Outdoor Inc. No, I got sales leads from an email account which is tied to a Google phone number which is tied to my website. The account that I'm referring to is Science West Outdoor. Mr. Yurik? Yes. I don't want to confuse you. <laughs> okay. Okay. So yes, I got leads. You're, are you not saying that you're upset that you couldn't get leads from that business anymore? Yes, I am saying that. I was upset. Okay. Well, you... You stated over and over again that business no longer exists. So how can leads be coming in from that business, Mr. Yurik? Because it's an email account that all my clients were using to communicate with me. And you just mentioned it's also a phone number attached to a website where you get leads for this business. Is yes. it not? My brother built a website, and it's his website and it generates leads. The phone number that was on that website that people call and say, I want to buy a sign, was associated with the email account you hijacked. So since you I also... I didn't hijack it. Well, then return it. Your Honor, he's talking to me and accusing me of things. Um, what do I do when that happens? Ask another question. The... 
900 number that you're referring to, is it not on the Science West Outdoor website? And is it not still active? And is it not still generating leads that leads to the Science West Outdoor Gmail, which you're saying doesn't, um, is not open and it doesn't exist anymore? Objection is very complex and compound. Compound. sustained. The, the, the number for the 900, the 900 number for a Google Voice. Is that not connected to Science West Outdoor? Not anymore. I had to change it because you wouldn't return it, so I had to spend three hundred dollars to get a new phone number and put it on there. So you're saying that if I pulled up the website right now, I wouldn't get leads as of today for that. Correct. For that as business. of a week ago. Your Honor, am I able to do that? Pull my, pull that up on my phone right now. I'm telling you, it's not on there. I paid three hundred dollars to have it removed and the new number put on it. Because you wouldn't return it. Is it not true that you gave me permission to take Jordan to LA so you could try to have me arrested for felony kidnapping? Jeez, no. I gave you permission to take her to LA because you're good at photo shoots. And Jordan wanted you to be there for her photo shoot, for new headshots, for her acting. So when we were going on our way to LA, and you rescinded your permission. Did you not threaten to call an Amber Alert on me? But if I, I may didn't... have because you stole my hard drive and told me you're not giving it back. And the audition was canceled, so you had no reason to go there. While I was in L.A., did you not tell me if I was not home by 7 o'clock that you would issue an Amber Alert? That's I just answered that, yes. Did you say you would alert, if I wasn't home by 7, you'd issue an Amber Alert when it wasn't even possible for me to be for that? Yes, so I have no idea what you're capable of doing, so yes, I probably said that. So I didn't no do it. Of, if you have no idea of what I'm capable of doing, why would you allow me to take Jordan to California for days? Because she begged me. And I know the kids want their mom at times and it's an extremely difficult balance I'm going through for a year trying to balance your bad behavior and terrible influence on them and their need for the love of a mother so you're saying that you allowed this because she begged you that's the yes. kind of parent you are it's, all they have to do is beg you and you'll do what they want no it's usually no I did not want you to go on the set of uh, walk the prank that's another issue I'm glad you brought up did Good. you did you not um, tell the people that Jordan's working with that I am um, that I do not have custody of her and I have no no rights to her and that I'm not allowed on set. Did you block me from seeing her on set? No, no never, never, would, never would have okay, done that. Okay, have you blocked me from seeing Jordan on set? Mm -hmm. Oh, you haven't done that? No, never. Have you told her agent that uh, you have full custody because I was a determined and unfit parent? I told her agent that I got her that I have temporary full custody and assured her she would make every audition. Did you tell her I was on an unfit parent? No. It's five o'clock. We're going to break for today. You can step down, Mr. Urick. How many more witnesses do you have, Mr. Anderson? I, I get arrested as soon as I redirect uh, Mr. York. Okay. And how many witnesses have you listed properly? I don't know what the proper procedure even is, so um, I guess I don't know if I've done it correct or not. I try to enlist witnesses, but um, I try to enlist my exhibits, and that wasn't the right procedure. So. Probably. You can't call your children as witnesses. What? You can't call your children as witnesses. They're of mature ages. Well, who else did you list? Mr. Yurik admitted on stand that they're mature beyond their years. Who else did you list? I listed the, the um, everyone that I had inter um, interviewed for BirdQuest. I um, wanted to have some dance moms come by and and it, talk about my character and um, a, a couple of people from the pageant thing that Jordan was in one year. Um, I wanted to have a, people that I know John works for testify. 
Your Honor, I have to tell the court, we have not seen any list of any of those people. Well, I'm looking at her list of proposed witnesses. She lists her children, which, is there one who's an adult? Yes. She's 20. Michael is 20? Yeah, I'm not sure she listed him, though. Yes, I did. Did. Okay. I can't stop you from calling him as a witness because he's an adult, but I recommend that you don't. Why is that? Why would you think a child would want to be in the middle of his parents' divorce? Well, um, the thing is, is that a lot of false allegations have, have you thought made. about the emotional impact it would have upon a child to be put in the middle of his parents' divorce? Are you thinking about yourself or are you thinking about the child? Because I haven't seen one child in here testify that didn't start bawling on the stand and couldn't even talk when his mom was asking him questions. And he was 19 years old. And I let him go. About a 20 year old adult. So, okay, so you want a 20 year old to cry on the stand? Because you don't care about his feelings? You do what you have to do, ma'am. If he starts crying, he's leaving. Employers, not listed, no names. Employees, no names. Family members and friends. She has listed eight of them. That's in her pretrial memo. Your Honor, I, I will stop from calling duplicative witnesses because I don't want to hear five witnesses on the same issue. But you have one more day because plaintiff is resting. He's just going to redirect on a couple of questions. And you have the rest of the time. Um, and then plaintiff will again have time to ask any follow-up questions from rebuttal witnesses. But you have the majority of the time on the next date. Your Honor, um would you like me to give you that date? Yes, ma'am. November 9th. Or, let's see. What day of the week would that be? Hold on, I'm looking at a couple of them. September 11th. In the morning, from 9 to noon. Do you know what day of the week that is, ma'am? Monday. Okay. I think we'd prefer the earlier. Okay. Um, I we would prefer the September 11th date. Okay. And we'll okay. start at 9 o'clock, and you go till noon. And um, so, Your Honor, I... What, what am I expected to do um, for that date? Put on your case. Um, what would be the, I, I don't want to mess up again, so what would be the procedure for me for that day? Call your witnesses. And, and um, would I be able to submit exhibits on that day? No. You haven't presented me with any exhibits. Um, how... How, how am I able to submit exhibits? You're not. Am I allowed to submit case law? If I ask for a closing brief, if you were going to submit any case law, you should have done so in your pretrial memo. If I ask for a closing brief, which I don't know if I'm going to or not, then you can submit case law. I have um, submitted some case law in my pre-trial memo, but... Um, That's fine. I didn't know about a lot. I've been spending a lot of time researching, a lot of hours in studying, writing things down, and I found out that my rights have been violated and that there's case law supporting what I'm saying and I believe I have the right to say that um, what case law supporting 
my violated rights. It's a motion hearing now. It's an hour, isn't it? Yeah. 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 I have NRS code, case law, and Supreme Court constitutional um, amendments that have been violated against me. You can raise that in your closing argument. I feel that it's imperative that is the sooner that it's raised, the better. Um, I um, didn't want to leave here today without my children. I've never been given a, a parent fitness test, and I am just became aware that I have a right that due to due, due to my Fourteenth Amendment rights and due process that I that my kids should never have been taken away from me, not even for a day, without a parent fitness test. And I am requesting that to be done and I have my kids back until that's done. I don't want another day to go by without having my children, without that parent, Are you unless you're claiming that I'm unfit. Is that what the court is claiming? Is the court claiming I'm unfit? I think she's misstated the law, Your Honor, and to ask you to make that and answer that question at this time is improper. I, I just am wondering if the court is claiming I'm unfit, and if the court is not claiming I'm unfit, then I'm asserting my 14th Amendment rights to have a parent fitness test and have my children being, be given back to me immediately. First of all, your children haven't been taken away from you. I've I'm, entered a temporary custody schedule for the protection of the children due to your behavior. My behavior oh, I am has not, not changing. I am not changing the schedule until I make a final decision. It is the temporary schedule, and I found that to be in the best interest of the children. Your order says I can only see my children once per week, and I have police report evidence showing that I didn't even get them once per week. I haven't seen my daughter for two weeks or even known where she was, and I filed a motion to enforce custody, which was denied. Um, I, this has been a full year that I've only allowed to see my children once a week with no overnights, according That's to That's incorrect, order. because I gave you Wednesday nights also, so you could go tutor, and you haven't been over there once on a Wednesday night to tutor. So that's incorrect that I gave you one day a week. I increased your time at the last hearing, because we talked about you going over there and helping Jordan with her studies, and you have yet to do that. So why would I increase your time now when you haven't exercised the time that I've given you? With respect, Your Honor, um, Wednesdays you said I could only go there when Mr. Yurik said I could, and um, he didn't give me that opportunity. Is that and what the also, order says, Mr. Anderson? Pull out the order and tell me where it says that she can Judge, only be over there on Wednesday when Mr. Yurik says she can. Judge Hughes, also, um, you're not. You're, you, you can stop talking because I want I'm I want someone Mr. to Yurik. answer. Okay, we're not talking right now. We're actually looking at the order where I told you that. I'm afraid of you. Defendant shall have visitation with minors two times per week. One of those visitations shall occur on Wednesday after school to 8 p.m. Defendant shall help homeschool daughter at this time at Plymouth's residence. Uh, it did provide that if First time defendant yells at daughter, the tutoring stops. Right. That's what I recall. And you were sent a pretrial memo on May the 15th, 2017, and that clearly stated that you are to identify your exhibits and your witnesses, and that you are to provide me with a set of exhibits and not to file them that you are to provide copies of proposed exhibits marked, tabbed, and organized in a three-ring binder to the court no later than five days prior to trial. Plaintiffs shall mark their proposed exhibits by numbers. Defendants shall mark their proposed exhibits by letters. In addition, each page of the proposed exhibit shall be sequentially numbered at the bottom right side of the page. It is further ordered that failure by counsel or litigants to meet the requirements of 5.524 or the above deadlines 
or NRCP sixteen point two may result in sanctions, including exclusion of witnesses, exclusion of exhibits, reasonable expenses, and or attorney's fees incurred due to non compliance with this order. Your Honor. In it, in the case Chagus versus Zuck, it says that the court stated that pro se litigants have an implicit right to self-representation. It's an obligation on the part of the court to make reasonable allowances to protect pro se litigants from inadvertent forfeiture of important rights because of their lack of legal training. While does the not exempt a party from compliance with relevant rules of procedure, it should not be impaired by a harsh application of technical rules. Trial courts have been directed to read to read pro se papers liberally and to allow them in a pro se complaint fairly freely. The court's duty is to even broader in the case of a pro se defendant who finds herself in court against her will with little time to learn the intricacies of civil procedure. I did my best to enter the exhibits in every way that I could. You have my list of witnesses. Why, why isn't my list of exhibits also entered as my list of witnesses was? It's on the same motion. Because you didn't provide them to me or to opposing counsel. You don't have them here today for us to even look at. And you were required to do it only five days before trial. And I gave you two continuances of the trial date to get your case ready. I've given you more than leeway. You're more right. than that. I and wanted, we're off the record. Good day to you. I will see you I next time. I wanted to tell you the problem why I couldn't do that.